this Saturday night. It's Division I College Hoops as the Lopes try to string together back-to-back -back victories with the Wolverines of Utah Valley in town. We're taking you live inside GCU Arena where the Utah Valley Wolverines, they are hot right now, riding a 20-8 and record, 9-3 in conference play, and the Lopes looking for their 19th overall win. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for being dialed in tonight to your view. Cox Channel 4 here for the Lopes pregame show. Well, once upon a time, the Lopes were out on the road and they did drop three straight. But they returned home before the clock, clock strikes midnight. And so they avoided turning into pumpkins. But they did turn things around, getting the win Thursday night over Seattle University. And now as they wish upon a star, they hope for yet another victory with Utah Valley in-house tonight as they try to see their happily ever after in this WAC conference play as they end WAC conference regular season next Saturday with Bakersfield in town before heading to that WAC tournament. Well, if you can't tell, tonight is character night here at GCU Arena. That's what the Havocs will be celebrating in the stands. Meanwhile, the players, they'll be serious about basketball tonight. But since it is character night, it seems only fitting that I would bring in our characters who will be calling the game tonight. One of you might be Prince Charming. The other one, uh, maybe a little Beauty and the Beast. I'll let you two decide which one. I'm talking to Barry Mandel and Scott Williams. Guys. Thank you very much, Cinderella. <laughs> yeah, all right. Talk about a couple of characters. There's no doubt about that. How about this team, though, bouncing back after that three-game slide with a big win on Thursday against Seattle? Yeah, they needed it. Uh, they, they got a little momentum going into this, uh, you know, WAC conference tournament in the postseason, and they did it with the defense. Most importantly, they made them inside. They got on the glass, and they got out one, got some points in transition, and they took care of the basketball. 19 to 21 from the free throw line. That was great to see. And Damari Milstead, nice 12 minutes of play, seven points. Picked up a couple of assists as well. So this race atop the uh, Western Athletic Conference, Utah Valley coming in here tonight. They're one game back after uh, New Mexico State dropped a couple. And the Lopes are right there as well at four. Yeah, the Lopes have a big chance here to gain some ground on both Seattle and Utah Valley. But uh, I think they might be more cognizant of how they're playing. I mean, they want to get this win, no doubt, on their home floor, but they want to be cognizant of how they're playing. They played great team ball last game. A lot of guys came off that bench and contributed. They want to handle that type of success. One guy that uh, started in the game and has been the go-to guy, according to Coach Marley, Alessandro Labor. Yeah, the Italian Stallion, he was absolutely phenomenal. He did a nice mid-range game. He backed guys up. Uh, he, he, once he got, the, you know, thinking he was going to drive to the basket, he pulled up for outside shots with the pick and pop. He also went inside for some buckets. So he did a nice job mixing up his game. And when he got the opportunities to get to the foul line, boy, did he really make the most of 14 of 15 from the free throw strike. Che Grande, Alessandro Laver, 30 points, 10 rebounds, first double-double this season and of his career. Definitely uh, working it down in the low post. And what's great is he can shoot from anywhere on the floor. Yeah, he's got a nice game. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Coach Marley has instilled a lot of confidence in both those freshmen. How about confidence? You mentioned that word. Matt Jackson came in and took a shot right away. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. He was phenomenal. He took an outside shot, and then he realized, okay, and then he go, go inside and get a bucket inside. Once you get a little taste of that ball going through the basket, now that thing gets big as a, you know, a hula hoop, and the guys want to uh, sag off of Matt Jackson, and he did a nice job of knocking in the outside jumper. And I love that right there when he's hanging around the basket for the uh, guards to be able to dish it to him, and he finishes around the hoop. 21 minutes in the game, a season high, nine points against Seattle for Matt Jackson. Good to see him playing well coming off of the bench. Utah Valley comes in after winning their 20th game of the season. A, a big win, uh, 70 to 47 at Bakersfield. Yeah. They blew him out. Yeah, Mark Pope's really got this team playing well. He's getting good contributions all up and down the floor. And I like the style in which they play. They're not afraid to bound it inside, get out and run and transition. I mean, they're averaging 80 points a game. We'll be looking at their grad transfer from Munich, Germany. Their leading scorer is Kenneth Hogby. I love this guy right here. He's a live wire. He can shoot the three, not a fade to put it on the floor and finish with his wheels around the basket. And, he's, and he'll dish the basketball as well. He's a very unselfish player. For 22 in a big win against New Mexico State on February 15th. As you look at Kenneth Ogby, minutes per game 30, points per game 13.6, 55 of 134 from the three-point arc. So 
We'll be talking about Ogby and much of the other Utah Valley lineup as well. They're playing really well for head coach Mark Pope. Kate, we'll send it back over to you. Yeah, the stage is really set for that WAC tournament when you're going up against a team that is really peaking at the right time like Utah Valley is. Given that, Scott, what would a victory tonight do for the Lopes to kind of boost that confidence and help morale heading into the big WAC tourney in, in a few weeks? Well, I always say that, uh, that your momentum is very important in a lot of sports, but none so much as basketball. It, it's most important in basketball. You start stringing a couple wins together, all of a sudden you get hot at the right time. Anything can happen. I like the way Coach Marley's got his team playing right now. He's shortened his bench rotation a little bit, giving some guys some, some opportunities that uh, were showing promise earlier in the year. They've got a lot of confidence right now, and his team's playing good. Yeah, we saw that. We saw a very happy Dan Marley after that victory over Seattle University. He put some plays in place over practice the weekend. They followed through. So now we'll see what Coach Marley has to say about tonight's game plan. Coming up right after this, Barry sits down with Coach Marley to get the game plan. And Marley is just one game shy of reaching 100 victories for his career here at GCU. Barry talks to the coach about that win number 99. And of course, what's on tap to get win number 100. That's coming up next. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in, we're going on an adventure. Here in Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to do, so much to experience. When I started my degree program at Grand Canyon University, I knew I was embarking on a journey. I never expected it to be such an adventure. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you're never more than a few short hours from something worth remembering. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Study hard, play hard, never stop moving. What are you waiting for? Come earn your degree in fewer than four years while exploring everything Arizona has to offer. So, you ready? Find your purpose in Arizona. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. It's homecoming next weekend on the GCU campus. Join the Lopes Saturday night as they welcome back the alumni and host the Roadrunners of CSU Bakersfield. GCU will look for revenge against the runners for the loss last week in California. If you make it to the House of Havoc, be sure to tune into your view, starting with the pregame show at 6.30, or join us online at gcu.tv. If you're out and about, then tune into your car radio. Michael Potter and Tom Kuiper on the Fanatic 1580 AM, 99.3 FM, and 95.9 FM. Welcome back to the uh, local pregame show. Barry Butel alongside the head coach, Oh, that was a sweet move. Thank that you. was like Vegas. Thank you. I'm getting ready for Vegas. I am getting ready yeah. for Vegas. That was like Wayne Newton right there. All right, let's move on. Okay. Hey, uh, big win. First uh, of three here on your home court, and you guys uh, were victorious on Thursday night. Yeah, we needed it. Seattle's a good team. They were playing well. Uh, we had beat them there, so you know they had a little revenge in mind, and plus they're, they're battling away at trying to uh, get the number one seed or number two seed. So, uh we knew that was going to be a tough game, and I thought our guys showed up, played extremely well. Um, got a huge game by, uh, through, through uh, Alessandro mm -hmm. with the 30 points and 10 rebounds. Uh, Damari came in, was big, hit a couple big shots down the stretch, um, and overall it was a good game. 99 wins. Not too bad, right? Fifth season. This one, just one win away? From what? From 100. Yeah, well, yeah, that's nice. You know, yeah. I've been lucky. I, I, I've had good players, and... Uh, you know, it's just the support that we have here. Uh, we've we've done a lot here in the first five years, so uh, we just got to keep it going. Now, do you think after that win that uh, everything's great? Everything back on no, track? No, oh, no, 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 no. I told our guys it's, that's one win. Uh, we're still seven and five in WAC. Uh, let me say that again. We're seven and five in the WAC. Uh, that's not where we're supposed to be. That's not where we don't want to be. One win doesn't make up for anything. Uh, we have to continue to get better and play better, uh, win tonight's game, and then win. Uh, you know, next week and, and continue to be on a roll and be playing our best basketball, hopefully, uh, when we go to Vegas. So I, I told them if they think everything's fine, it's not. It's not fine at all. You know, we got a lot of work to do. Your bench stepped up. Jackson, Martin, Milstead, they all uh, came off of the bench and did well. Matt uh, Matt played really well. He's, uh, <clears throat> he's, you know, he's healthy, finally. Uh, last year, he went through a lot of injuries. He's very lively in practice. 
Uh, the best thing I, I thought from Matt was how aggressive he was. He came in, and the first time he touched the ball, he shot it, uh, which is something he doesn't usually do. And I told him, you know, play like you do in practice. Be aggressive, and he did that. Uh, Jared, really good defensively, hit a shot. And then Damari, played him a little bit in the first half. I didn't think he played very well. Uh, saw that Casey was getting a little tired, and I put him in. And uh, the one thing I love about Damari, has no fear. Right. And he went in there, and he played. Uh, hit a big shot mm -hmm. and just kept him in there and he finished off the game. So that was uh, a big step for him. It's amazing that uh, you see your go-to guy is a freshman, Alessandro Laver, 30 points in the game. He's really, really playing well. Yeah, and it's not amazing to me anymore because of the work he puts in. I mean, every day I see him, he's the first in the building, the last to leave. He's the first one to be at pregame meal. Uh, he's the first one out here to shoot. He's always asking questions. Uh, so you, just every day you see him getting better. And, uh, you know, everybody's doing a good job of getting him the basketball. They realize that he can score down there. Uh, he's getting a little a bit smarter. I hope I don't jinx him about staying out of foul trouble, mm -hmm. uh, realizing he can't pick up the cheap ones. Uh, and he's a guy. It's, it's a special because, you know, in this league, we don't have a whole lot of big guys. Uh, so when there's smaller guys on him, we can post him up. But when he does play against bigger guys, uh, he's so good at spreading the floor, we can put him outside and use him in pick and pop situations. Yeah, against Menzies, I mean, what is 7 3, and he was hitting from long range. Yeah, he can really arc. step it out and shoot. He's got one of the nicest shots on our team. 36 minutes, Josh Braun, what did you think? He kind of stepped up a little, a little bit, bit better. Active. A little bit better. Uh, he's got to be active. I tried to get him, uh, you know, off the ball and then getting the ball and coming off of ball screens, putting him and Ollie together. Uh, seeing if he can get a little bit more active there. And, and you know, he's starting, his shot's starting to look a little bit better. He's still not going in at the rate that we would like it to go in. Uh, you know, Josh has been so great for so long for us, but starting to see a little spark in him. So hopefully here tonight, he's usually uh, pretty good against Utah Valley. You know, against Utah Valley, he sure wasn't uh, there. You know, he had yeah. one shot fouled out. So tonight, uh, hopefully he can rebound and have a good game. Yeah, 19.6 points per game against Utah. So hopefully a rebound here against the Wolverines, a team that is playing really, really well as uh, they gear up for the tournament. You're gearing up for the tournament. Is, is the way that you approach your lineup or your bench uh, are you fine-tuning it with the I tournament think I, coming I, up? I've shortened the lineup yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I've shortened uh, the leash on guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll put Rob in there uh, early, see how he's doing. Uh, I'll probably try to put Fifi in there early to see how he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they don't get it going, you know, you probably won't see him much in the second half. You know, I got a lot of trust with Jared. I got a lot of trust with Matt. Um, so I'm going to shorten the lineup a little bit. And those guys, I know they've been down the – the stretch with me before and they know what it is it's about with big games so you know i put a lot of trust in those guys and we'll just see how it goes if people get in foul trouble we have to use other people and you know who knows if rob comes in and starts making a few shots and does well he may play a little bit more but i'm going to go with the guys that i trust right now you were had a huge lead uh well a big lead at utah valley they storm back ogby the toolsons Manyang. what are you going to be facing here tonight well just an older team that really can score they, they play a lot like seattle they spread the floor uh, love to penetrate, can really shoot the ball. They got two really good big men who can uh, set screens and roll and can score. So it's going to be a lot like we, uh, uh, you know, face against Seattle, guys who just uh, can really penetrate and shoot the basketball. Uh, defensively, we did a pretty good job at, at Utah. We just couldn't score. Uh, and we have to do a better job of that tonight. All right, good luck. All right, thanks. Head coach Dan Marley, our guest, stay with us. More of the At Lopes pregame show continues after this timeout. She's the first Indian-born basketball player to earn a D1 scholarship, and she's doing it right here at GCU. But the journey to play on the hardwood has been nothing but easy for her. We'll meet Kavita Okulo when the Lopes pregame show continues. Earning your RN to BSN degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. Finding your purpose takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience delivering our accredited RN to BSN program 100% online. Graduate in as few as 16 months learning from full-time practicing nurse faculty in small classes. Integrate your education with your faith and Christian worldview. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu.
welcome back. It's character night here at GCU Arena. If you're at home, you can follow along. You don't have to dress up as your favorite character, although that could be fun. But we do want you to find us on social media, either Twitter or Instagram, using the hashtag LooksRising. And you could be a part of our broadcast, as you see, tweets scrolling on at the bottom of the screen. Jump in there. Tell us about maybe your favorite GCU basketball moment so far this season, and maybe even your favorite uh, movie with some of these fun characters we're seeing in the stands tonight. We're going to have fun out here at GCU Arena because uh, the clock is winding down on this whack season. Just two more regular season games for the men's basketball team. I'm Kate Longworth. You're dialed into your view, and we're talking Lopes basketball here on the Lopes pregame show. We're going to talk more about men's basketball, but first switching over to women's basketball where the road has not been easy for junior guard Kavita Akula. Growing up in her native India, she had to bike miles to practice playing youth basketball, and then she had to travel across the world to achieve her hoops dreams. However, she's doing just that right here at Grand Canyon University. I remember I was, I think, 10, um, 12 when I represented India for the first time. And then um, we had this huge camp and then we were there for like three months. And then we just heard some coaches gonna come and they just gonna work with us. We had a president, he made a deal with IMG Academy that we gonna send like eight kids. It was like 50 of us. They told us that four girls and four guys got selected to go play in USA. It was amazing. I made some great friends and then Coach Shell as a head coach there and she was just amazing. I had to learn English from the scratch, so like I didn't know anything about English. So that was one of the biggest challenge. And also food. We don't eat anything what you guys eat here, so it was just so different. My senior year, I was talking to a few schools and you know, like trying to go to um, college and then all of a sudden like my dad passed away so my coach was like no you need to be strong I know it's hard but just take your time a little bit and then just continue everything but I went back in India all the culture is different I needed to do some stuff with my dad ashes because it's like one of the tradition there I wanted to quit there, but my dad wanted me to finish college and find a good job and all that. And my mom was like, it'll be better if you just go back. I know it's hard, but you need to like, you know, move on. So <laughs> that was kind of all right situation. <laughs> I lost all the scholarships, so my coaches were like, all right, why don't you try um, junior college? And then I went to junior college and then now I'm here. <laughs> In India, we used to play outdoors, so like we have to wake up like three in the morning or four in the morning to uh, work out before the sun comes out because it's so hot. And my mom she used to wake me up all the time and like, hey, you need to go, <laughs> stop sleeping and all that. She was just supportive when I started leaving the house for Indian camps because I used to play for my Indian team. I mean, I still do. <laughs> And then she was just like, you are not like one of those normal kids. You need to be a little strong. I know it's like such a young age you're leaving, but you need to be strong. And she just like, I don't know. <laughs> she was special, it's really special. I just wanna like set a goal for every girl that is in India and especially those poor kids, they don't have anything, like anything. They don't have basketballs, they don't have shoes. They have to try to fight for every single thing. So if I become something, then I can just go back and help them and be their coach. <laughs> That's what I wanna do. I'm most proud of getting a Division I scholarship. I want to finish college here, and then if I can play overseas somewhere else, that would be great. If not, then I'll go back to India, play for them for like, you know, a few years, and then be a coach. Just try to teach them <laughs> some basketball. <laughs> And coming off the bench for Nicole Powell's team, Kavita is averaging just over five points per game. And the Lopes have been such a surprise on the women's side in the WAC. Uh, they weren't picked to finish very high, but right now they are in the third spot after the win over Seattle University on Thursday. All right, we have more to come. Talking about athletics across the board with our one of our favorite characters here, 
at GCU, and that would be Mike Vaughn. We're going in the Vaughn right after this. Stay with us. My name is Anthony Perez, and I earned my master's in education at Grand Canyon University. I feel that the degree program at GCU definitely got me ready and prepared me to be an agent of change so that way I can lead my classroom to find innovative ways of solving the problems in education in the state of Arizona. Grand Canyon University definitely has a vibrant campus that has many resources that are accessible. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. right behind us on character night here at GCU as we're counting down to tip off. But we want to remind you, baseball has sprung here in the Valley as well. GCU's baseball nine led by head coach Andy Stakowitz are out in San Diego this weekend playing in the Tony Wynn Legacy Tournament. They've already beat Cal Poly earlier today and after that record breaking weekend of season and attendance against TCU, you can bet the Lopes will be happy to be back home at their new Brazzle Field at GCU Ballpark for the GCU Classic starting on Friday, March 2nd, 6 p.m. against Cal State Northridge. I'm Kate Longworth. We welcome you back to the Lopes pregame show right here on Your View. And I am joined by really the most popular man on campus. He is everywhere. He's for sure the busiest guy on campus. Vice President of Athletics, Mike Vaught. And Mike, first of all, what a day you've had today. And we're going to talk about everywhere you've been and get an update on all of the athletics. But we were just talking about, we can't believe it's nearing the end of the basketball season. What a season it's been when you talk about attendance. And now here we are just weeks away from the WAC tournament. What have you seen unfold with Dan Marley's Lowe's? I tell you, I think uh, we have the best fans in America. You know, we pack this place every week. It's a, probably a good time to thank our fans. We're here at the end of the year with one more home game left. So um, our atmosphere is one of the best in the country and our fans are so loyal. They show up, they're loud, they stay late. It's just a great place to play. I know, it's a theme night tonight, but you don't even need those here. Everyone gets ready and in character no matter what the game is. But also, we're seeing some great basketball just overall. We've been talking tonight about Nicole Powell's team. What a great lead run they've been on. Bree Mobley leading the way, and now here they are fighting for a really high seed heading into the WAG tournament. What have you seen from them? Well, Nicole Powell's a great teacher. She has a great staff, and they've achieved, they've overachieved. Yeah. You know, she's done an amazing job this year. She has a contagious smile. She's a great person. She brings a good energy to the room. Uh, and really, when you get in whack play, it's up, it's up for grabs here at the end. You know, when you get to the tournament, right. so they've got a great shot when they get to Vegas. Yeah, they definitely yeah. seem poised and uh, peaking at the right time. And we've missed basketball being out of town the past couple weeks, but I know you and I still had a chance to visit over at the baseball and softball stadiums. Awesome season openers for the new stadiums. But first, let's talk about baseball. Record crowds against TCU. Right now, they're doing great things in San Diego. GCU Classic coming up. What are you anticipating for this year's squad? Well, they got a lot of good players back. Uh, we're preseason picked to win the league, and Coach Stankwich does a great job. And it was a great atmosphere the other night opening the stadium. Uh, full house, playing TCU, ranked number four. We end up winning the game on Sunday right. in exciting fashion at the end. So that's really a signature win for our staff. And picked up a win today. They're playing again tonight. So we have high expectations for the program, and so do our coaching staff. And the softball team doing well as well. But doing well as well today. They beat, they shut out both Niagara and uh, Houston Baptist, yeah. and uh, they keep firing for the, swinging for the fences as well. And I think they have high hopes and expectations for the season ahead as well. Yeah, they're uh, defending WAC champs also. Right. And when you look at our coaching staff, she's been around a while. She really knows what she's doing. There's a great culture in that program. Coach Pearson really creates a great culture. And uh, they played well today, and we're, we're expecting another great season and, and a great new facility for them too. Yeah, it's very yeah. exciting. And uh, 
I think that when we talk about all these facilities, they're all great because you have the 10 and 2 initiative yeah. and that's 10 sports facilities in two years. And for you today, you've been everywhere. So I know we don't have a lot of time, but kind of take me through your day from golf. And I know you've kept your eye on uh, track and field and swimming. Take me through what's going on in other athletics today. Yeah, today I started out with a workout at 7. And then I went over and watched a little beach volleyball. Then I went down to the golf course and checked out the golf tournament. Came back, watched some more beach volleyball, then I watched softball, and now we're over here. It's a hard life to be Mike Bob, but hey, somebody has to do it. The exciting thing is you get to go to state-of-the-art facilities, and you're talking about teams that are achieving great success, or as you said, even overachieving where you expected them to be right now. Yeah, yeah it's an exciting time here at GCU in general. You know, President Mueller and his staff do an unbelievable job, and the growth of our university, you know, it's just kind of hand in hand with the growth of our athletic department. So it's a great partnership. We're all on the same team here. It's a great place to be. All right. And this is a great place to be tonight. You are locked into your view Cox channel for it is character night and Dan Marley's team getting ready to take the court in just a moment. We are counting you down to tip off. Thank you, Mike Vaught, for being here with us and fans at home. Stay with us. We'll be right back as we take a quick trip around the WAC. It's almost turning time. We'll let you know how it's all looking. I'm Taylor, and I'm getting my Bachelor's of Science degree in Marketing from GCU. Moving on campus was one of the best decisions ever. Once I moved on campus, what really made me feel like I was a GCU student was going to all of the events and getting plugged into all the different things that we have going on here. One of the things that makes me feel most safe on campus is just the whole community aspect. Like we're a big family here, and just knowing that I'm welcome with open arms and I can just be myself. Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Between my academic scholarship, my RA scholarship, I've got a lot of school paid for already. And what's been nice is that as I've been working throughout school, I've been paying back my loan each summer. The day I graduate, it'll feel awesome because I'll be graduating in three years and I'll have little to no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. University in action tonight at Bakersfield. And Bakersfield will be the Lopes' final whack opponent right here next Saturday night. Meanwhile, also in action, the Aggies, they're trying to bounce back. They've uh, been struggling as of late, and it might not be the night to do that as they go up against the Ruse, who have won four straight. Meanwhile, Grand Canyon coming off that big win on the ladies' side against Seattle University on Thursday. But tonight, they did fall at Utah Valley, 84-64, the final there, despite a great game by Jessica Dudewski. She had 27 points. She was 7 of 9 from three-point land and had 7 assists. A tough loss for the team, but Nicole Powell, no doubt, will get them bounced back and ready to go for that tournament in just a couple weeks. Meanwhile, we're getting you ready for tonight's action. It's character night here at GCU Arena, and we will see if the Lopes can get their happily ever after right after this as they go for the victory over Utah Valley. Barry and Scott will have the call on the other side. I'm Christian Talon and I'm earning my bachelor's in information technology at Grand Canyon University. I really wanted to be able to integrate my faith and career and that's one of the reasons I wanted to go to GCU. One of my favorite ways to do that is by being a part of the life groups on campus. It's a great place to come and study the Bible and have that community experience. Cyber threats are a growing problem for companies and individuals alike. A lot of resources online are under scrutiny of attack. I found it my purpose to try and help businesses and Christian foundations and defend themselves against those attacks. One of the great benefits of going to GCU is that we as students get access to the state-of-the-art IT labs that the university is setting up for us. I really feel like the professors at GCU have invested in me personally. They are always encouraging and providing me with the resources to further my own education and really just grow my interest and passion for technology. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Grand Canyon University, Arizona's private Christian university, is a top tourism market bustling right in the heart of Phoenix. Join the student team at the GCU Hotel. Oh, here, guys, go! 
live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight, GCU hosts the Utah Valley Wolverines. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, the Lopes had been sliding three straight before coming back to begin the first of three here on their home court and a big win against Seattle on Thursday. They really did a fantastic job playing team basketball. That labor was wonderful in that game. Milstead, the other freshman coming off the bench. And uh, Josh Braun kind of followed himself a little bit of a rhythm in that, and uh, later in that first half and on into the second. 76-64, the final score, 19 of 21 from the free throw line were at the Lopes. 30 points in the game, 10 rebounds, first double-double for Alessandro Labor. He had a wonderful game. I mean, he had everything out of his bag, work in the mid-range game. The outside shot was clicking from behind the arc. I love when he takes and pops over to that left wing position. And when he guys dish him down low, he can finish down amongst traffic. Good concentration, he gets fouled, he goes to the line, and he knocks in his free throws at a high rate. Averaging 15.2 points per game in conference play, Alessandro Labor is now the go-to guy. Utah Valley finds themselves just a game back of the first place New Mex Mexico State Aggies. Here is a team that is on a roll. Kenneth Agri, their grad transfer, doing a great job. Yeah, he's wonderful. He's a live body. I mean, he's not afraid to be able to run the floor, play amongst the trees inside. He can shoot it from behind the yard. He's got very quick step to the basket, can finish amongst the trees. And I love the fact that he's very unselfish. I mean, he's the one of the big reasons why this team averages almost 80 points a night. Coming off a big 70 to 47 win against the likes of CSU Bakersfield on Thursday night. Time to tip things off here between the Wolverines and the Lopes. Let's send it over to the public address announcer, Paul Deneuzer, with our prayer and our national anthem. Once again to Grand Canyon University Arena for Disney night and tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Wolverines of Utah Valley University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Juven Polyganus, also known as Captain Hook, a junior majoring in worship arts and a member of the Thundering Herd pep band. All right, would you guys bow your heads with me and let's talk to God here. Father, um, thank you for all that you do in our lives, God. Thank you as this uh, basketball season winds down for all that you've done in this arena, God, all that you've done for this uh, division, for this conference, God. I thank you for all that you've done for these athletes here in this uh, court today. God, I pray for good sportsmanship on both sides. I pray for a safe and healthy game. And I pray as we come together here today as your people that we... Uh, we remember, we remember why we were created. We were created for moments like these, God. So I thank you. I thank you for all that you do. And I pray again for a great game. So it's in your great and precious and powerful name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Juven. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Arizona Lutheran Academy Choir under the direction of Andrea Opperman.
Thank you, Arizona Lutheran Academy. There you heard Paul DeNuzer with the Arizona Lutheran Academy and our national anthem. Utah Valley comes in 20 and eight overall, 14 and one at home. They are six and seven away from Utah. There's their head coach, Mark Pope, in his third season, 49 and 43. Here are Coach Pope's starting five. Connor Toulson, Jake Toulson, Kenneth Ogby, their leading scorer, Brandon Randolph, and Isaac Nielsen. Yeah, we're gonna look at uh, Jake Toulson here. He's 6'5", 205 pound, red shirt sophomore. He averages nearly 12 points a game and five dishes, uh, five rebounds. This is out for three assists a game. He is the nephew of Danny Ames, general manager for the Boston Celtics, one time Phoenix Suns. He's from Highland High School right here in Gilbert. He was the WAC player of the week last week. And he is hot. Mark Pope, as I mentioned, his third season, former assistant at BYU for four seasons. The assistant coaches are Cody Feger. We'll run those down. Hi, I'm Bethany. I'm a junior here. Grand Canyon University. Dan Marley starting five. Casey Benson, Josh Braun, Oscar Freyer, Alessandra Labor, and Keontae Vernon. Yeah, Keontae Vernon, the Smash Brother, he must play taller than his 6'6 frame tonight versus the 6'11 Nielsen, because he loves to crash the glass. Coach Marley needs him to put on his hard hat, bring his lunch pail, and do some man's work inside tonight. Dan Barley sitting at 99 victories here at Grand Canyon University. The associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistant coaches are Chris Cremelone and TJ Benson. Director of Basketball Operations is Luke Dallariva. Special assistant to the head coach, Brendan Sabian. And the graduate assistant is Johnny Hill. Coach Pope's assistants, as I mentioned, Cody Feger, Chris Burgess, and Eric Daniels. Another great crowd here on Character 9 at GCU Arena. Scott, your much anticipated three keys to tonight's game. Well, you know, Utah's the beehive state. Well, the love to see the beehive state of mind tonight. They're gonna swarm to the ball. You got a double team on all the dribble handoffs. Double team down on the post up. Gang rebound. This Utah Valley team shoots 48 percent from the field when you lead the whack. You gotta make it tough for them anytime they're on the floor offensively. In the Marley's way. That means be aggressive offensively. Drive it hard to the basket. And if you can't get it to the basket, you get the ball on the perimeter. If you're open, let it fly. And then a mental toughness right now. It's not win. No, it's win, not if. When they make a run. This Utah Valley team will make a lot of runs. You gotta play smart, you gotta stay together, and you can never hang your head. As we talked about, they lead the whack and score at nearly 80 a game. Folks, fans will remain on their feet till they hit their opening bucket. There's your officials. Dan Novakowski, Martin, G. Husky, and Toby Doolittle. We are underway. The Lopes win it. Prayer back to Keontae Vernon. Casey Benson brings it across center court. Into Vernon. Hands it off. Labor. Benson. Top of the key. Dishes back out. Freyer moves inside to Labor. Turnaround floater is short, and the rebound is pulled down by Connor Toulson. It looked like Labor didn't really establish the good position when he had it down low. We've seen him in the past, you know, get some body contact, probe, dribble. That time it seemed like he was, looks like it was a hot potato. He couldn't wait to get it out of his hand. Brendan Rudolph, Ingo with California native.
down, but a foul. I think they got a 24-7 clock violation on that one. Wow. I think it was Oscar Frere that came over to challenge that shot and got a piece of it. Ball slipped out of young man's hand and shot clock blew up on him. Randall behind Benson. Back out. Braun to his right. Frayer. Bounce pass. Burning inside. Baseline driving. Heavy didn't drop it. But the foul called on Isaac Nielsen. Nice going inside, trying to establish the big and labor the time to four on that right block. Come back, get the ball down to Keontae Vernon in the mid post area. And he takes it right to the big man. Get out of my way, I'm going to the hole. Keontae 55% from the free throw line. Was too quiet in here. <laughs> I was afraid to say anything. I think this is one of the, the nights that the the, fr the uh, seniors really must step up tonight. Keontae Vernon, Casey Benson, who went scoreless last night uh, on Thursday night, and Josh Braun. They really must have big games tonight. Lopes want a chance tonight against Utah Valley. Vernon 0 for 2. Randolph brings it up. Moves to his left. Looking for Ogby, able to get it over to him. Freyros on Ogby like glue. Labor came out to support. They kick it back out. Tulson pulls down inside. Got it off the hip. Looks like it might be a travel. Yep, lost the possession and tried to rally, but unsuccessfully. You know, such a big game for both of these teams, and maybe a little bit bigger for the Lopes as they want to try to keep their momentum coming. Both teams a little uptight here to start this one in the first minute and a half. No score early on in Phoenix. Benson inside, Vernon comes back out, the floater goes! And the Lopes fans can take a seat. Well, they've gone down low three times on their first three possessions and been successful on two of them, although Vernon wasn't able to knock down the free throws. But they get some good looks. Wilson looking for Nielsen. Vernon got a hand on it. Nielsen from his knees out. Of labor says one of the officials. I love when players give up their body and die for the floor to try to scrap and claw that thing out. Look at Vernon, he gets back, he gets a hand on it. Look at it, he jumps on the floor, tries to get it, and then I think it's the labor that it deflects off of and out of bounds. Connor Toulson leaves it there for Jake Toulson. Back to Randolph. Randolph kicks it out. Open look. Connor Toulson, too heavy. Ron Benson. Side, a little bit of a height advantage there on Tulson, but Labor comes back out, looks for three. That's off the mark. Big rebound by Freyer off the glass and it. Oscar Freyer. Well, he, he's got a knack for that basketball. He saw him get a couple steals early on and got himself going defensively. Nice to see him get on that offensive glass. Maybe that'll, that'll get his offensive game going as well. Big Tulson. Hockey, their leading scorer. Back over, Jake Tulson brings it down, cuts into the paint and storms up over the top of Keontae Vernon. Yeah, they're going to get a trip. Keontae Vernon was trying to slide to his left, just couldn't beat Tulson to the spot. Trip, tripped him up at the officials, I think, with the correct call. So he's trying to slide his feet, trying to slide his feet, maybe tries to sell the charge foul a little too early in the play. And when his feet came out from underneath, and that's what tripped up Tulson. Battling off, limp there early on. Aaron shot picked up by Benson. Benson's gonna slow it down, bring it back a little bit. Cuts to his right, he wants some. Heavy on the three, up over the top. I'm not sure if that was the correct call, Barry. That ball, I don't think, went behind in the backboard. The official had a tough angle on it from where he was at. I thought it came off more to the left of the backboard rather than going over the back of the backboard. That should have been Lopes basketball. Tough break. Randolph leaves it for Connor Tolson. And off to Jake Tolson. Like a spin wheel. Randolph back out. Pulling it down is Jake Tolson. Wanted to go underneath. Went right-handed in off the glass. Yeah, he got away with dragging his pivot foot. 
And the officials didn't call that one, but what an athletic play to get around the big and flip that thing up off the glass. Looks lead by two early on here. Burnett. They got the bigs down there wrestling underneath. Actually, it was Labor down there. He had a mouse in the house. And Tulson didn't want any, any part of him wrestling with him down there. He said, I'm going to take this foul, make you guys take the ball out on the side. Jake Tulson from Gilbert, Arizona, Highland High School grad. He checks out. Actually, it's going to be a baseline out of bounds play. This is where the Lopes have been really successful over the years. Banyang is in the game for Utah, as is Zach Nelson. Bounce pass into Vernon. Vernon trying to move on Man Yang. A floater up over the top. Man Yang got a little bit of it. Under 16 to go. Randolph. Trying to move past Benson. Brings it back down. Connor Toulson. Nelson. Lockby. Man Yang. Trying to get it in to Zach Nelson. Unsuccessful. Lopes. Warming around the ball, quickly burning, low post, soft. Oh, Josh Braun can't put it on. The Lopes are getting some good looks underneath, and they only got four points to show for it. But that's what it takes, swarming to the basketball deep principle, create a turnover, get a chance to score on the other end before the Wolverines can set their deep. Bogby over to Randolph. Ten on the shot clock. Connor Toulson trying to turn to the bucket. Trying to get by Freyer. That ain't gonna happen. They're a great defender. Inside Man Yang working on Labor. Right at the expiration of the shot clock. I think they're gonna check that and make sure he actually got that ball out of his hands before the shot clock expired. Officials want to take a look at it. 14.57 to go. In a, what is now a 4-4 game. Take a look at this replay one more time. It looks like the ball is up off glass with one second left to go. And send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, on character night here at GCU Arena, it seems kind of unreal that in just two weeks from tonight, we will know which team in the WAC will have their fairy tale ending as they punch their ticket to the big dance. That's right. The WAC tournament will be taking place March 7th through the 10th, which means on Saturday night, the 10th, we'll know the winner of the WAC and who will be heading into NCAA tournament play. We want to remind you that the tournament will be played at Orleans Hotel in Las Vegas. All such tickets can be purchased through the GCU ticket office and the Orleans Arena box office. You can call the GCU ticket office at 602-639-8979. Single session tickets will be available to purchase when the tournament tips off on the 7th for the women at the Orleans box office. The women quarterfinals are on that Wednesday, March 7th, with the men's quarterfinals on Thursday, March 8th. We've been talking about Nicole Powell's team really having a turnaround season this year. They will be in action, hopefully a number two, possibly a number three seed. And that's exactly what Dan Marley's team's trying to get a hold of, trying to finish off WAC play right now with a big victory tonight over Utah Valley. And of course, we'll see Bakersfield in the house next summer. Yeah, so much to look forward to after four long years for GCU. A lot of Lopes fans making their way over to Las Vegas. Orleans Arena earlier for a non-conference matchup where the Wolves scored 100 against Morgan State. That's a nice arena. I went out to the concourse, walked around, they got some good concession options up there. The big fellow likes to eat, so I'm gonna go up there and get my grub on, check out some action. I'll have to sit down here and, and actually work the game. I can sit in the stands with the, with the habits. Oh, enjoy it. Face. That's it. Freyer, right wing bounce pass into Labor, turning on Menye, trying to work. Oh, Menye said, no, no, you're going to work harder than that. <laughs> yeah, Labor's gave him his best head and shoulder and ball fake that he has in his repertoire. Menye getting bite, and Labor's went up. Menye was right there to send that one back over towards the Wolverine bench. Menye, wow. Seven feet and he's jumping up and down. He's really hard to get by. Huh? We got a hustle here. Five to shoot. 
That's it short. Manye. Another standout basketball player from my home state of Minnesota. Just had to mention that. Rochester, Minnesota. I believe New Mexico State's uh, player is also from Minnesota. Off the glass and in. First lead here for Utah Valley. Utah Valley likes to take the ball from side to side, try to get the defense uh, slowed in rotation. Three by Oscar Freyer connects. I like that one right there because Freyer is wide open on that right wing. He catches the ball with very little hesitation. Knew he was going to let it flop. Wolverine started 0 for 3 from the field. Now they're 3 of 3. Ogby make that 4 for 4. Well, it, there it is once again. Taking the ball from the left side to the right or the right side to the left. They are finding success. Lopes can't stay with them off the dribble. Braun, Labor looking for three. That's way off the mark. All right. Hogby. Hold down the three. Oh, yeah. Oh. Paul Paul in the little center four. First team five. Well, that last three and that pick and pop by. Lavers, he looked at the official like he might have been uh, bumped on the elbow, but the ball flew so far, I don't know how that could have been the, been the case. So Jackson and Martin in. A couple Aussies and from down under coming off that point. They were at a big impact on Thursday night, and the Lopes need to do more of the same here tonight. And Yang owning Laver up over the top of the right hand off the glass. Just a wheel now. He just catches that ball on that left block. He just wheels right around to the far side. I think the Lopes were having more success when they had these Wolverines playing in a crowd. Right now they're playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. And they're winning that battle. Labor too heavy. Scored 30 on Thursday. Trying to hit his first bucket. Benson driving beyond Jackson, and there's a bit of an issue. I think Labor's going to be checked out. Roberts Blumber. Yeah, he gets a little bit of a blow here. He's been going hard the first seven and a half minutes. Bring Blumberg's in here. He's got good length still. Shoot the ball from the outside. We haven't seen as much of him as we did in the first half of the season, but when he's gotten into the game and, and gets something to happen early, then he's more. he seems like he's more engaged, more in focus on both sides of the court. Four fives in the field for Alessandro Labor. Coach Marley had plenty to say as he made his way out. Randolph trying to move on Freyer. But Barry trying to get it inside to Ren Yang and Freyer's got his second personal foul pretty early on here. And Freyer trying to come out of that corner here as, as this pass starts to go down low to the rolling Manye. He tries to come out of the corner there, but catches Manye's long arm. That's an easy call for the official. If one foul, that's a tough play for Freyer to try to get to. I don't want to give up an easy a bucket inside, but got to have him defensively to stay with the perimeter players that the Wolverines have. Vernon comes back in. Long range shot off the mark. By Randall. If that's not gold to me, I don't know what wow. is. Burn it. I, I mean, I know this man Yang's long, but that ball was in the air for a long time. I thought it was on its way down. That's him driving. Ooh, man Yang getting his hands on Benson. Better be careful. <laughs> Coach Marley sprinting down here. And he wants to make sure nothing breaks out. Oh, Coach Marley's talking to the official. Uh, he, you know, he puts his hands on Benson like that, and, and I'm not sure what they're, what game they're watching here. Uh, they're trying, Marley, I think, is just trying to get his players back to the bench, and officials wanted to make sure Coach Marley was <laughs> coming down here to escalate the actual action. They think they had it under oh, control. Hey, hey, hey. That, Coach Pope should uh, not be talking to the other players on the other team. Uh, I wouldn't like to see Coach Marley doing it. Well, there's the replay right there. They kind of get they kind of get tangled up a little bit. And 
I don't know if Benson was holding Man Yang or whatever, but then Deont Vernon comes over and gets in Man Yang's face and says, hey, pick on somebody a little bit bigger than our smallest guy that we have on the floor. And Pope's got it out there. He's Pope just bumping his gums. Like Marley was trying to pull his players away. The other coach should be doing the same thing. All right, we're going to try to cool things down here in Phoenix. 10-7, Utah Valley on top. 11.51 to go, opening half. You probably don't want to go anywhere. Hi, I'm Bethany. I'm a junior here at GCU. Students are making a huge impact on the Valley just through painting the Valley purple. It really means a lot to people in Phoenix to hear that somebody's from GCU. It almost gives you like credentials because they know that you're a good kid and that you're gonna go far. I definitely think GCU is preparing me for my future and teaching students and being a difference maker in the lives of other people. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. It's the most wonderful time of the year, the 2018 WAC Basketball Tournament at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. March 7th through 10th, 14 games, four days of WAC Madness. Be there for the triumph. Get your tickets now at gculopes.com. See you in WAC Vegas. A lot of emotion here early on between Utah Valley and Grand Canyon. The Wolverines up by three early on. As Man Yang and Casey Benson got tangled up near the baseline in front of the Wolverines bench. Caused Marley to come all the way down the court and get his players away. And Coach Pope also getting involved. Look at the block by Man Yang. Yeah, you see, Benson tries to go in here and he's trying to look for some contact. And Oh, man. oh, this is the one before. That's the previous one where ben Man Yang went up, and I thought he got goaltending. It's kind of hard to tell from that angle where the actual apex of the flight of the ball was, but he certainly can get up well above that 10 foot mark to go get shots. Two games remain on the conference schedule for GCU. Let's take a look at. Uh, I believe we've got the loop. Bakersfield closes it out a week from tonight. Here we go. Is this Casey Benson coming down here? And then he goes in there. See how he just kind of wraps his right arm around Man Yang? And they can have a lock there. So, that, that, you know, that's just a couple, couple big, strong young guys with a lot of adrenaline going right now, just, just playing hard. And, what problem is you don't see enough of that in basketball, so then when something like that does happen, it, I think it makes more of a bigger deal out of it than it really need be. Okay? But Casey Benson, too valuable to this team to get you know tossed out of this basketball game. I like Millstead, but I don't want to see him have to go for 35, 30 minutes tonight. Well, both fans want to see their team respond. They've only hit one for their last 10. Tom Valley coming in here and not backing down. This is a team that is 20 and 8, 9 and 3 in the conference, and they're only a game back in New Mexico State. Yeah, see, see that this study just got tangled up right there. Their arms are locked. Neither one wants to give a whole lot, a whole lot of ground early on, and then Mangying wants to kind of steer down on Benson, and Benson back steered down oh, on him, on, and then Casey on, Benson gets on. in it, and he starts, and then Mark Pope starts talking to. Keontae Vernon, but see what happened was he he went out onto the floor and, and kind of got between his player and Vernon, and he should have been facing his guy and not facing Vernon. But remember, Mark Pope is he's got that old school NBA mentality. I he was teammates with me back during my Milwaukee Bucks days. We used to scrap not only against <laughs> other teams but against one another. So. You know, that, that's that kind of the, the player popped out and poked rather than the, the coach remaining in, inside the inside the uh, the suit there. So he'll, he'll learn as time goes on to get his player, face his player, get his own player under control, and then 
Coach Farley came down from his bench to try to get his guys in, in, you know, under control as well. But I don't think anything's going to happen here. There's a couple guys with their arms locked at the end of their day, and then end of the day, and then a lot of guys bump with their gums. And now they, now they got the coaches. The coaches are square off there. <laughs> I don't know who wins that battle. Mar Marley probably win that battle. He looked like he'd fight dirty. <laughs> yeah, let's make it call. <laughs> Those are two really good coaches. They are These good. are two really good programs, yeah. and Coach Pope's doing a great job with the Utah Valley. Really are. I, I remember before the season even started, we talked about Utah Valley could be the surprise, the sleeper of this conference, and they certainly have. They've been doing it all season long. I mean, take beating the New Mexico State and all the other top chickens. I mean, remember the last time we had uh, the Lopes played Utah Valley? They jumped on them early. And got off to a quick, a quick start, the double-digit lead. And Utah Valley just methodically ran them down and took a big lead to the locker room and the momentum, and it just snowballed Whoa. into the second half. Well, they, they both of them aren't happy. Uh -oh. Both of them are not happy. Now that's wow, generally I the case. One somebody coach got injected. Would react, but both of them. Yeah, I, I bet there's going to be I'll some ejections what, if they're if they're saying that uh, if they're, they're they're both on that, that unhappy. Both coaches get teased, apparently, and Keontae Vernon also a technical. Oh, they're that upset about technicals? I would have thought somebody would have got an ejection. Well, they, wait, they, both, <laughs> they both went nuclear at the same time over there. This is just a little bit ridiculous. Coach Marley is still giving a couple of the officials the business. Well, he's, uh, he's really pointing out one official, there's no doubt about it. Now, this has gone on too long. Hey, officials need to just tell Marley to get back to the bench, tell Pope to get back to the bench, and let's get this game started. Well, the crowd's not going to like it, but let's resume the game. Technical on Vernon, as I mentioned. Technical on Marley. Yeah. Jake Tolson at the line. Tolson made one or two. Now we're going to play on. I, I, are you sure that both coaches got tees, or is it just Marley that got the tee? Because I don't know why we ain't getting any free throws in our end, if that's the case. Time now to get back into playing basketball. He's so both coaches and just on. and just Keontae Vernon with the tee. Then is that why they had the two free throws? Okay. The burial inbound, and we're back to the reason we all came here. <laughs> yeah, let's play some ball. Loose ball there. Oh, he just gave up on it. Wasa, Benson, right-handed in. That crowd's gonna love that. It was, it was bizarre. It almost looked like he had an opportunity to grab the ball, but right. just retreated on off. defense. And Benson backed away from the ball. Said, "Oh, you're gonna leave it here for me?" He took it, sprinted the opposite way, got himself an easy bucket. Randolph, DeBerry, a long and ten. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> All that time and those technical free throws did it. It erupted this crowd behind us. This is as loud as, loud as I've heard the Havocs all season long. Hey, it's not only the Havocs, it's the entire uh, arena is going crazy here on that air ball by DeBerry. That's going to be tough for these Wolverines to concentrate over that noise level. Connor Tolson checks back in. Akwasa takes a seat. Benson. He's definitely energized. Bounce pass. Jackson looked inside. Now he finds a wide open Blumbergs. Ooh. Pulled down by Braun, knocked out, it'll belong to GCU. How about Josh Braun skying for that rebound? Really wanted Blumberg to make that, but it's been a lot of looks underneath, working hard for that basketball in the offensive, offensive end. They got five O boards already in this first nine minutes. So the starters come back in for Utah Valley. Ogby's in, Manyang came back in. Had some words with Benson, they're laughing. Things happen. Benson for three. Oh, ho, ho! Casey 
Benson! Casey Benson with five quick ones. He gets the bucket inside and then a nice jump. Kitten that basketball in rotation. Knocks down the three. Casey, fortunately scoreless last game on Thursday. This perhaps provided a spark. Driving Toulson high off the glass. Doesn't go. Broad got up and knocked it out. Ron's got an extra little, I think, gear in his vertical leap tonight. Mark the Blumbergs. Foul underneath. I think they got Manier. No, it wasn't Manier. Underneath here, I love this one right here. Just a quick look by Martin. So unselfish, always got his eyes up. Good court awareness, finds the big rolling down the lane. Wokes up by one. Timeout. <laughs> they put Big Man Ying on that ball down there. He's, he's as uh, long when he spreads his arms out side to side as he is tall. And there was no place for little Casey Benson to inbound that ball. Smartly takes the timeout versus getting the turnover with a five second down. Should time it when he's jumping up, just go underneath his legs right there. It's unbelievable. Well, baseball is underway. Yeah, it doesn't feel like baseball weather out there, but spring training's underway. The GCU Baseball Nine, led by head coach Andy Stankiewicz, are out in San Diego this weekend playing in the Tony Gwynn Legacy Tournament after a record breaking attendance weekend for the season opening series against TCU. You can bet the Lopes will be glad to be back at the new Brazzle Field at TCU Ballpark for the GCU Classic that starts Friday, March 2nd. 6 p.m. first pitch against the Matadors from Cal State Northridge. Big win against Cal Poly today. No Mumper and Applica did well at the plate. Mike London with a big bounce back game on the hill. I not baseball's already here. It seems yeah. so early this year. Listen to some spring training games on the radio on the way in here. D-backs got crushed today, 11-2. I can't remember who they were playing, but boy, they took it on the chin this afternoon. But it's hard to kind of, hard for me to get my glove out and start getting ready for this. No on the ground, still up north. Offensive rebounds in favor of the Lopes, five to one, but Ogby hits the big three. I knew Ogby was going to come off that bench and look to be aggressive offensively, and he wanted to quiet this crowd, get some control back for his team. 41% from the yard. No bucket. Wow, that was a nice job, Casey Benson getting the man in the air. I, I seem to me like he got his guy in the air. Look, he jumps up in the air, leans in, gets that contact, and all in one motion, and tries to float that ball. And I believe that ball went in the basket too. I, we kind of got the short end of the stick on that one. It is the fifth personal, excuse me, the fifth team foul on Utah Valley. Laver back in the game. See how he responds. Braun short. 940 and counting opening half. Utah Valley up by two. Ogby, top, trying to move on. Jackson kicks it back out, pulled down by Jake Toulson. Inside, Mannion. Didn't put it home. Tried to keep it back in. Braun waited patiently. Driving is Benson, the foul called. So you're going to get Ben Knapp. Awesome. Man, another side out. I, I, I was going to say, this. there's no way that this will be a continuation if the last one wasn't. But now that's the 16 foul. Benson being aggressive, going to the basket, looking to draw some contact. And Lopes will be shooting free throws the rest of the half. There's still nine minutes and 18 seconds to go. Josh Braun, nothing on the scoreboard, but he does have four rebounds. Oh, just short. Labor with the rebound. Benson. Benson drives, slashes in up high. Not there, but Jackson is. Aussie, 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 cleaning up the weak side glass. Seven offensive rebound have been huge tonight. Tied at 14. Under nine to go opening half. Jake Toulson loses it a bit. Jackson's on him. Oh, Jackson staying with Toulson. Oh. He's six nine and a half, six ten player. Playing out of the printer, sliding his biscuits. Martin on Ogby. Not there, and Labor pulls it down. Jared Martin with a good D. Yeah, he's got to do the defensive job now that Oscar Frere generally would do. Oh, Labor, that's way really short. He, he hasn't he's got his game his tonight. Yep. Now he, he's off his game. He's got to go inside and get himself to the free throw line. Connor Tolson. Ron's going to be called. Again, 
a Utah Valley player taking the ball on the, off the dribble, moving the defender, and just getting the edge and getting towards the basket. They're flipping the ball up off the glass. Well, how they must work on that time and time again in practice. It looks like it is a staple to their offense. Man Yang out, Nielsen back in. Randolph looks to inbound. Yeah, that was a long time. Yeah, well, they got it. They got the five second call wow. on the turnover. You got it. You nailed it, Barry. Like an eternity. Well, they don't have the length that Man Yang provides down in that basket. When everyone's denying their their man the ball, they cause the turnover. Damari Milstad in the game. Damari seen extended minutes. Takes it back, moves right, cuts in. Looks for Labor, but Nielsen got a hand on it. Oh, must have went off Labor. It did. It, it kind of surprised Labor. I mean, Milstead hits him in a good spot, but the speed in which the pass travels over to Labor was just a little too fast for Labor to handle. And it might have been deflected before it got to him. Randolph. Surveying moves left. Trying to move back in. Kicks out Connor Tilson, pulls it down inside the arc, driving in the floater, and good. Tilson with the pump fake that time to get Matt Jackson off his feet and got around and put too much pressure on the back line of the defense. Jackson, ooh, down low, but Braun's able to pick it up. Nielsen quickly. Martin, he'll throw up for three. Off the mark. Rebound, Nielsen. Randolph moves right. Beyond the arc. Nielsen on him. Randolph looking for a little bit of room. Weaving his way out, Connor Toulson. Three-pointer good. Getting that ball below the free throw line is absolutely deadly. And they've been very successful penetrating down beneath there where they get floaters or get guys to come out of the corner for help, and then they find the open man for the long ball. Benson and Fifi do at the scorer's table, as is Menyang. Milstead throws up free. God, Damari Milstead! Well, you saw the aggressiveness of Milstead on Thursday night. And right again, he, the team needed a big bucket. Milstead delivered. They were really stuck on 14, stuck in mud. Milstead with a big shot. Randolph. Connor Tolson pulls down on Jackson. Weaving in right hand and in. Too much. That they is. got too much team speed for these lopes. They're going to continue to play in this man-to-man -man defense, which they, they will all night long. It's a, only thing that they practice, then they got to do a better job getting some help to keep these guys from getting that ball deep into that painted area. Seven points for Connor Toulson. Labor attempt for a three. Short, front of the rim. 0 for 7 from the field after the 30-point performance for Alessandro Labor on Thursday night. Chatting with himself on the court. That's never good. Ogbe, Randolph to his left. Looked inside, pulls it down. Ooh, that was close. Short. I thought he got away with shuffling and changing his pivot foot on that drive, but the Lopes still get the stop. Wilstead. Back out. Martin pulls down the three, drives into the paint, weaves around underneath for Labor. Foul! Twenty-one seventeen is the score early on. As Casey Benson has definitely been fired up here. Five points in the game, a couple of rebounds, got tangled up with Nicola Manyang. And you can see the energy after that, that little bit of a uh, Yeah, that's the intensity. That's what guys, you know, you, you gotta get yourself going somehow. I was that player that needed to have a lot of intensity to get myself going. And even if I had to manufacture it or fake something, you know, said something about my mama, what? You what? know, whatever this case might be, but you gotta like this right here. Guys understand, hey, they're playing for the opportunity to go get a higher seed for the WAC tournament. They're going to leave it all on the floor, and I love that one right there. You get the steal, you drive it hard to the basket, and the next time down that basket looks as big as an ocean, you throw it in the long ball. 5.24 to go, opening half, four-point lead for Utah Valley. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, it is character night here at GC Arena, and I decided to have a little fun along with the Havocs, who are dressed up from everything from Aladdin. I think we have the Captain Hook in the house. I saw some Incredibles in the house, some great movies, and so I picked some of my top movies.
beauty is there. It's funny we should say beauty because I talked to the players and asked if Dan Marley was a Disney character who he might be. They kind of laughed, but they said the Beast pretty easily. Meanwhile, the Aussies agreed with me. Matt Jackson, Jared Martin, they said Toy Story, their top Disney movie. And I followed that with Cars, Oliver and Company, Finding Nemo, Prince's Diaries, The Lion King. And what I forgot, but then when I saw a character, or a fan rather, dressed as this character, Mighty Ducks. What a good one. I forgot about that one. And uh, I did talk to some of the players about their favorite movies. Josh Braun weighed in with Hercules being his favorite. And uh, like I said, Toy Story is mine. What Guys, you? what's yours? Toy Story, hard to argue with that. But yeah, that's cool. Gotta go, school. I got to go back vintage, man. Yeah, go back to Herbie the old the love bug. Herbie and the love bug. Herbie fantastic the, and the love bug. Yeah, fantastic oh, movie. I'm going with Bambi. Bambi made me cry. You know, Bambi came out in 46. I mean, that's, oh. that's going back to the early days at Disney. <laughs> oh, try those tears, guys. There's no crying oh, in basketball. That's right. You're right. Kids of all ages here at GC Arena enjoying the night, but Alessandro Laver is fighting. He was 14 of 15 from the line on Thursday night. He stepped to the line on his first one and hey. finally gets one to go down. <laughs> sometimes your scope just gets discombobulated. It's like my golf game. I, I can go out there one day and, and shoot 78, and the next day go out there and shoot 94. And then a day later, just no rhyme or rhythm, reason to it. Out on the lopes. The very inbounds. Guasso leaves it. Connor Toulson back to the very. The very looks right, pulls it back down. Inches to his right. Connor Toulson beyond the arc on Labor. Connor Toulson driving baseline. Up over the top, and oh my goodness, Connor Toulson is his speed and acceleration is unstoppable here tonight. Yeah, he got nine on four or six shooting, but most of his you know, points are coming in that painted area with little flips and reverse layups. Braun lays it up. Oh, it's in and out. Man, he can't buy a bucket. They got Manyang down here holding. That's going to send Labor to the free throw line. Lopes out working him on this offensive glass right now. One of the reasons why they've been able to hang around. They haven't been able to score on all their offensive rebounds, but they're taking the ball out of the hands of the Wolverines, and they're not allowing them to get to the other end. This is a team that normally averages 80 points a game. They're stuck on 23, far below their halftime average. Eight to one margin and offensive rebounds for GCU. Doc Nelson checks back in. Veteran laden group from the Utah Valley. They were a couple of back-to-back -back free throws now. Looking to find that groove. It's back to back. Three point Utah Valley lead. Dawson leaves it for Connor Toulson. DeBerry, Terrell DeBerry. Milwaukee, Wisconsin again, Toulson. That's one short off the mark. Nelson tried to get it. Loose ball, pushed up. Nice save by Pierre Du. He got the longest arms for a six-footer in the, in, the, in the league. Milstead. We have Labor there. He feed it to him. Back door, Benson. Benson moves to his left. Cuts into the paint. Nelson falls down. And Benson puts it home. The lead now just one for Utah Valley. I'll tell you what, Benson did a nice job. Normally a lefty that doesn't like to drive left, but somehow he was able to squirt his body and get it going left. He actually finished with the right hand moving to his left. Laveri looks to drive baseline on Benson. Charge! Casey Benson has come to play. Yes, he has. He got that hard hand on. He got bumped. He ran all the way to the locker room. They had to turn around, come back to the court. He's going to get a timeout. He needs to get a little bit of a glass of water and a seat. 3.53 to go, opening half. A hotly contested opening half. Utah Valley leads by one. I'm a sophomore here at GCU, and I'm studying mechanical engineering. Arizona is completely different from Italy, but that's why I love it so much. 
I feel honored to be here at GCU. I feel like they truly care about who I am. If you're passionate and if you work hard, you can do it and GCU is here to support you. I will be able to apply my knowledge and make a difference immediately. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Back at GCU Arena where the Wolverines lead it by one over the Lopes with 3.53 to go. Hey, congrats go out to the men's and women's GCU track teams taking the title for the third straight year of the indoor track championships. Coach Flood, our scheduled guest on the next Dan Marley show coming up next week. GCU leading Utah Valley nine zip and second chance points. You ever try, run, try running track? Uh, try is, yeah, I probably tried. Tried running, running track, yeah. I, I, I started, I, that's kind of how I got my athletic career, was started on the track. I used to be one of those, uh, we called it a 100 yard dash back in the day, I guess it's 100 meters. Travel on Travel field, field. Yeah. So you had some, you had some, uh, you early had on, some, yeah. That's how, that's how I, that's how I got my introdu introduction to sports. Was on the track. Well, you had some speed. I was speed, yeah, but I didn't realize you're supposed to run as fast as you you're you can. I just ran faster to beat the guys that I was racing against. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I did do some good in the heat. <laughs> Nelson trying to back in on Labor right hand. That's short. Pulled down by Braun. Labor did a good job against Zach Nelson. They're doing a nice job. I mean, it, you, you say that, okay, they're, they're shutting them down, but they're almost shooting 50% from the field, and they still only have 23 points. Still feeding Labor. <laughs> How about Labor? He had that right shoulder turn to the lefty hook working on Thursday night. Whoever's been working with him, I get a lot of credit to the, well, not only the Labor, but that coaching staff that is working with the bigs. They're doing a nice job with those low post moves. Barry up over the top. 6-0 run for the Lopes. They now are on top by one. But time and time again here at home, GCU Arena, I don't know if it's the crowd or what, but the final four minutes of a of a half, the first half, it seems like the Lopes were able to get themselves a little momentum, a little mini spurt, something to give them something to go to that locker room feeling good about. Manyang back down the court. Milstead. Benson. I thought this would be a high scoring game. I thought this, you know, halftime score would be 42-38. Labor got it and a feed from Braun. Manyang trying to get ahead and in there. But it's just a tad late. That's just good high-low basketball right there. Very unselfish by Braun. Lead is now three for GCU. The run is 8-0 over the last 2-0-4. Ogby, though, their leading score. No, Mannion can't put it home. Labor with the rebound. Wolverines haven't hit a bucket for two minutes, 19 seconds. Labor looks for three. Pulled down, and Mannion is going to be called. Well, Labor does a nice job with his ball fake slash head and shoulder fake. He's got a little gooseneck work in it. He gives him everything. Look at this one one more time. You got Labor down. Labor's just right down here underneath the bucket. And then this ball's going to come in reversal. Josh Brown's going to come up to the high court, a high point there. And Labor's just going to flash into the middle and make himself big. He makes himself big right here. There's nothing Man Yang can do as he tries to run around that big redwood. Never going to get there in time. Easy bucket for Labor. Back in for Manning. Manning with two personal fouls. Labor connects on the back end. 81% shooter in the WAC conference from the free throw line. He gets to the free throw line, too. Eh? He'll, he'll have many more trips and opportunities as this game goes on. Last six buckets from Labor. Tulson, then lethal. 
Short rebound though by Nilsson and just crossed over Labor. Yeah, he, he got him pinned up underneath that basket. I think when Labor looked up, he looked up through the net. And there's a big, you never want to get caught that low to the rim, there's, uh, to the basket. You're never going to get a rebound looking up through the net. Second offensive rebound for the Wolverines. Labor driving on Nilsson baseline, trying to find some room. Too heavy on the put back off the glass, but Fifi Adu with the rebound. Ten on the shot clock, got to be careful. Seven. Mari, Damari puts it up off the mark. Honor Toulson with the rebound. 123 and counting. Two point looks lead. Gonna be a McLean go down to the wire. Randolph. Toulson driving baseline. Floater short. Foul called though. Looks like Casey Benson. Yeah, that's because of a poor closeout in the corner by Fifi Adu. A young player flying out, out of position, had no chance to try to challenge the shot, yet still recover on the for the drive. Benson's got to come over now out of position and commit the foul. Toulson. Jake Toulson, we mentioned earlier, from Gilbert, Arizona, Highland High School. Transferred from BYU. Nice job here in this first half. He's got 10 of their 26. That's into his lap. Oh, I take that back. That Toolson's only got, he's got four. So both the Toolson's combining for 13 points here in his first half. Fifi backs up. Adu moves to his left. Labor. Seven on the shot clock. Driving right handed in for Alessandro Labor. Little spark here late in the opening half after an 0 for, for quite a while. Yeah, old, he started out 0 for 5 and had nothing going. He's just been working himself back into this game. Three point lead. Ogby, their leading scorer, driving into the paint. Loses the handle, but there's a foul. They do. Milstead got called. That, that's, that's been the. The biggest problem for the Lopes here in this first half. He just go, they just are taking that ball from the wing or from the top and attacking that paint, and the Lopes have not been able to match their speed. 68% free throw shooter. Kenneth Hogby, the grad transfer from Utah, native of Munich, Germany. Jackson back in for Adu. Brayer just eight minutes here in this opening half with two personal fouls early on. Vernon's got two as well. RB connects on both. One point lead. 25 and counting. Coach Cup Marley had an opportunity to those free throws to get the play communicated to his team with what they wanted to run here. Looks like they're gonna run a double high pick and let Benson figure out which way he wants to come off. Benson to his right, under 10 to go, nine, eight. Braun tried to free him up, not there. Over to Benson in the corner, driving baseline. Three, two, can't get a shot off. Not pretty. A bit of an empty possession as Braun was really swallowed up coming off of that double down screen. The Lopes will take a one point lead to the locker room against this tough Utah Valley de defense. Going toe to toe, the Lopes and the Wolverines here. The Lopes lead it by 129 28. Let's send it over to Kate. Well, Coach, as a lap play winds down for the regular season, I know you've been looking for that fiery spirit from your team. The intensity seems there with this team tonight. How are you seeing the first half layout? Well, I thought we were better. I thought the beginning of the game, our body language was terrible. I mean, Ollie misses a shot and thinks he's not supposed to miss. I mean, he hangs his head. Once we got our energy going, we were better. Uh, we're having a hard time scoring, but somehow we're uh, up one. So we got to just keep on fighting, find our energy, move the basketball. Uh, but the body language was awful. Once we got that out, we were fine. And it seems that's how Laver found his game as well. He was 0 for 5 to start things, but now 10 points to his name. How pleased have you been with his effort down the stretch of this half? That's better, but I wasn't pleased at all. It's the first time I ever act, seen him act like a star. I mean, he's going to miss shots. So he's just got to play hard no matter what. And once he started doing that, he was better. All right, thank you very much.
Dan Marley, a uh, character on character night that is hard to impress, but rightfully so. He wants perfection from his team as they head into that tournament play, hoping they'll get the victory tonight against the top Utah Valley. 29-28, the Lopes on top of the Wolverines at the half. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities here on character night at GCU Arena. We'll be right back. college to further my education and to find my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone whether that be professors, my teammates, or other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things I can't necessarily be taught, and so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you change my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. A live look inside GCU Arena, where the amazing sliding is entertaining. And the crowd right now at half he is an amazing entertainment at half and also amazing, well, according to Dan Marley. It's amazing that the Wolves have a one-point lead right now over the Wolverines because he said at times his team not bringing that offensive performance he wanted to see, but down the stretch they did have a little bit of a intensity boost and a fiery attitude out there, so hopefully that translates into the second half because right now 29-28 over Utah Valley. I'm Kate Longworth. Thank you so much for joining us here for the Wolves Halftime Show on Your View, and I am joined by one of the Havoc leaders, Shelby Langston. Uh, first of all, Shelby, thank you so much for joining us here on Carrot tonight. We'll get more to that, but first take me through what your role is with the Havoc. So the role of the Havocs is really, it's a community here. That's what we love about it is students find their sense of community, they find their school family here. And what do you specifically do for the Havocs? So what I do is I do all of our social media and marketing, so I head that up and I work with our other leaders, we collaborate on it and get the information out to students. If the Lopes are here at GCU Arena, but also very popular is Lopes on the Road. Take me through how well the Lopes travel and what games you have been to. So we have Lopes on the Road, which is what the alumni will typically do, but students have already started to take it on even while they're going to school. So if there's a weekend game, which a lot of our WAC games fall on Saturdays, they'll go. We brought three buses to New Mexico State. We had eight of us go over when we played UVU at Utah Valley and then we had a group go to CSUB as well. And are a lot of Havocs planning on being at the WAC tournament in a couple weeks? Oh yeah, definitely. They are making their plans. We've got hundreds signed up already and we're looking forward to taking them out there. What is it like for you guys as, I mean the Havocs have taken the nation by storm. A lot of uh, outlets talking about you guys, other teams talking about you. What pride do you take in the fact that you guys can help influence the game by supporting the team? I think the students realize the role that they have and that they can really energize our team and they take so much pride in that when they look at our team and it's a victory for them too, you know. That's representing them when the team's on the court and a win for our team is obviously just a win for everyone here. You guys definitely 
really make things happen here at GCU Arena, but the basketball hype translates to other sports. We see you out at the soccer stadium last week at the baseball opener. Take me through some of the other sports you support and what's that, what that is like. So we go out, we support as many sports as we can. Right now we've got tennis going on. Tennis is one of the ones, we've got groups of students that just love going out to tennis games. And the tennis players, they really appreciate it because traditionally tennis doesn't get as much love as the other sports. We've also got baseball going on, which we had a huge crowd of students in the new stadium for the home opener. And still just getting students going to all those games. They love seeing everything that's going on around campus. And you guys also do a lot of theme nights. Take me through some of the themes you've done and also tonight's theme and how you fit into it. So some of the themes we've done in the past, we've done beach night, we'll do a purple out, um, you know, all kinds of different theme nights. We did Christmas night. And tonight we have Disney night because last year around this time we did beach night and you can't keep it the same for the students if you want to keep them engaged. We have to change it up and make it different. And that's another thing they take pride in is we do theme nights that other schools won't do. And you're representing Hercules tonight. Yes, I'm Meg tonight. choreographed cheers. Just take me through what happens throughout a game because fans at home, we try to show them as much as we can on TV and we encourage them to come out here to GC Arena. But take me through some of your choreographed cheers you guys have. You have notes on the seats. So tell everyone the insider tricks and trades of a happy. So a lot of it really starts with the students where some of them will start doing something and it catches on with the others and then we say, wow, that's a really good idea and the students love it. So we take it and we'll do it like we had one guy who would throw Twinkies. During, whenever we hit a three, he'd throw Twinkies in the crowd. And so the, we started doing that and we would go just buy tons of Twinkies and like ding-dongs and things and just throw them up into the section. And some of other dances and things students have just started doing because there was a random time out and they needed something to do and it just catches on. It's really, they build it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Shelby, of The Havocs. And this really is the house of The Havocs. We always encourage you to get out to GC Arena. And if not, you are, of course, dialed into the right spot here on Your View. All right, well, coming up right after this, we just saw the oldest acrobatic hand bouncer. That's what he says. Well, we'll see if Barry and Scott can top that with some highlight stats and much, much more right after this. Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000 square foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. My name is Anthony Perez and I earned my master's in education at Grand Canyon University. I feel that the degree program at GCU definitely got me ready and prepared to reach both short and long-term goals. It's definitely prepared me to lead my classroom and also be a teacher leader to find innovative ways of solving the problems in education in the state of Arizona. I'm definitely committed to student success and so I'm very passionate about working with students. What I absolutely love is when they get that spark in their eye and they understand a concept, when I have those moments, is making it all worthwhile in everything that I'm doing. Grand Canyon University definitely has a vibrant campus that has many resources that are accessible. I feel that GCU has prepared me to be an agent of change so that way I can support and advocate on behalf of children in the state of Arizona. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Wolves lead at 29-28 at the half. Very detailed. Scott Williams, so glad he could join us here from GCU Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. Started a little bit slow. There was a little bit of a, a melee or a little bit of scuffle. It wasn't quite <laughs> the melee, but uh, it seemed to fire up the Lopes a little bit. But Utah Valley came to play. They really did. They're doing a job defensively out there. They are very quick, very active. Moved to the basketball extremely well. One area that they haven't done a very good job is on their defensive blast. Lopes are plus seven 
on the offensive boards. Let's take a look at our opening half highlights. Begin with a rebound by Oscar Freire and a putback. Yeah, Freire, he got those early fouls, but this was a big one right here. That just set the tone for how the, the uh, Lopes were going to attack the offensive glass. He got that one early, and then Banya, you call him Man Gang, because when he was out there, he was a one-man wrecking crew. He really changed and altered the game and made it real tough for the Lopes to score anything inside. And this one here is kind of what got Casey Benson fired up. The guys got tangled up. Everyone started bumping their gums down here. And, you know, Mike Pope into the game. And uh, Coach Marley sprinted the length of the floor. He got into the action down here. <laughs> he comes in there. So that got everyone fired up. That got Casey Benson going. He gets this layup here. And tough driving, twisting between two players. Knocks down a three right after that. And Osby came quick to get off that line. Pope gets him back in the game. And, and he knocks down a three after the Lopes had kind of got this crowd into it, quiet the crowd some. Toulson, boy, was he good. Connor was fantastic in that first half with nine points, a number of outside shots and driving baskets. Billstead, after the Lopes kind of were losing the momentum, comes in and knocks in that big one. That got him going. And Labor, after going 0 for 7 to start this game, comes in with seven straight points to finish off the scoring in the half with the Lopes give him a one-point lead to the locker room. There you see our opening half highlights. Just 33% from the field of the Lopes. Three of 14 from the arc. Rebounding margin in favor of GCU. Points in the paint, Utah Valley. Second chance points, 9-2 in favor of GCU. Well, Labor started, as you mentioned, 0 for 7. Three of four since. I'm sure Lopes fans want to see the uh, three for four guy that showed up thir Thursday night when he scored 30. Well, yeah, I, and I'm sure that momentum will help them with that, but they got to continue the team concept. I like the way everybody seemed to get involved. Get Josh Braun going a little bit inside. Like Casey Benson's activity on that offensive end in the first half. As he went scoreless on Thursday night, he's looking to be more of a factor. And Keontae Vernon, keep chewing glass. That's right. Well, we will be back with more of our halftime before our second half tips off. Whoops, up by one, 29-28. Keep it right here on your view. Founded on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level, catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu slash business. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back. We've got a one-point game here at GCU Arena as the teams get back on the court ready to start second half action. Let's take a look at the leading scores for that first half, leading the way for the Wolverines, Connor Toulson with nine points, followed by Kenneth with seven and Jake Toulson with four points. Meanwhile, on the low side, Laver after missing his first seven on the board with 10 points to his name. Casey Benson, he went scoreless Thursday night against Seattle University, but found the hoop tonight, seven points to his name. But now the mayor has to find his way to the hoop right now. He is 0 for 4, that being Josh Braun. But after that little scuffle out on the field, after that under 12 mark, uh, this team finding its intensity, that fiery attitude that Dan Marley is looking for. And this team, they want to peak at the right time. Two more regular season WAC games this Saturday, next Saturday, and then it's tournament action, which is less than two weeks away. So guys, we'll see how the second half can finish off. A big win, a win against the Wolverines would be big time for them. No doubt about it. Toe-to-toe -to -toe in the opening half. 
Wolves lead it by one. Utah Valley will inbound right in front of our broadcast location. Jake Toulson from Gilbert, Arizona. Will have the honors. Wolves fans will remain on their feet till TCU hits their first bucket of this half. Place in the Western Athletic Conference. Game back at New Mexico State. Aggies in the lead tonight. Connor Toulson. Weaving around short. Nilsson turn around at the side of the bucket. Rebound, turn around, not there. Benson finally pulls it down. Great defense. Really good job on the perimeter. Moving the feet. They get like that floated into Nielsen, but he wasn't able to get it. He got so far underneath the basket. His first shot attempt actually, if you said, went off the side of the board. Vernon trying to work underneath. Hey, Mark! 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 Bounds. Lopes will inbound. 12 on the shot clock. Player on the floor with two personal fouls. Vernon as well. Labor short. Toulson, Connor Toulson with the rebound. Well, Labor's got a bit of a reverse pivot on his shot. which means he's moving back away from the basket as his shot goes up. Not generally how you would teach it, but it seems like it's really exaggerated tonight and it's leaving a lot of balls on the front of the rim. Randolph open, look for three. Off the mark, Vernon with the easy rebound. Yeah, that's where he's got to live. He's got to chew some glass this half. He didn't have any rebounds in that first half. Benson looks for three. Oh, that's in and out. Looks like the opening half. Oh, a charge. Nilsson on Vernon. Elbowed him. I, I missed it. I thought they had this ball secured down here. There's two bigs down here, and just that right elbow just said, hey, get off me, punk. Like, look at that right elbow. Comes back there and just knocks him right in the head. He's tough. He can take it. I, yeah, you have to worry about that guy leaving the game. Again, we go back to the monitor. Why? I I, under, I understand that you know the guy got hit in the head. A very but, astute follower of DC basketball. But this is unintentional. This is this is one of those ones that's unintentional. He's just trying to move the ball back away from somebody that's in front of him. How the heck is he supposed to know that there's somebody behind him? I was about to say, this is killing this, but there's a lot of things killing the college game right now, but this is certainly one of them. Very astute GCU follower before the game said, These officials like the monitor. <laughs> they, do like, they do like the monitor. Maybe, maybe they, it's before because the game they even tipped off. This gentleman, well, close proximity to us, said, These guys like the monitor. I don't know if it's just even this crew that we have tonight. We've seen this been going on all season long. Hey, I think they like the TV time that they get when they're over there on the monitor. They're ready for their close-up. Well, it wasn't very flattering because we showed up from the backside. Randolph to Connor Toulson. I'd be there, leading scorer. Goes left, cuts into the paint, slices underneath, kicks back out. My goodness. That, that, I mean, I, I don't know if they have a player on the floor that can stay in front of Ogby and Connor Toulson. That's going to be on Keontae Vernon. That is his fourth personal foul, and he's got 18 minutes to go in this game. That's bad news for the Lopes. Jackson will come in. Yeah, you remember, he, he had the two personal fouls, and then he got that technical foul uh, down there with Meng Yang and... And Benson, so that counts as a personal foul as well. Weaving, baseline, kicks back out. Ogby pulls down. He's trying to weave around Labor. Kicks out to Connor Toulson, goes by Braun. Toulson leaves for Nielsen. Tried to teardrop it in there, but Benson's going to pull it down. All right, Toulson's obviously faster than I thought, but I, I think I'd have a good chance back in my heyday of staying in front of him. He's going around these GCU defenders before they can even take two steps to try to slide with it. Four rebounds for Casey Benson. He leaves it for Labor. Labor trying to make his way around Nielsen. Muscles his way, draws the foul. Nielsen 
motioning that it would have been, should have been trouble. I've never seen a whole lot of Italian basketball in my day. I've seen some of the, Euro the other European countries play, but Labor's got a lot of that uh, Brazilian action where they're moving bodies one direction and then spinning back and coming back they another direction. Move, it's very, yeah. very effective. What's that? They know how to move. The Italians do? Or Brazilians, you know? Brazilians, oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. I play with Anderson Verjao and uh, Leandro Barbosa. Those guys are constant motion out there. I don't know, it must something with the rhythm and the dances that oh, they, they do down, down there. So. Blood. But uh, uh, Labor's got a lot of that uh, to his game. If you watch him work down and around the block, he's constantly trying to work angles and uh, spin back in different directions. Manyang checks in for Nielsen. Three point Lopes lead. Ogby. Look out to Randolph. Over on Manyang. Randolph trying to move off. We got a hand on it. Brad Randolph able to get it back. Again, down below that free throw line, they are living below the WAC logo in the painted area. That just makes too too much pressure on the defense. You got to keep them some 16, 18 feet uh, out on the perimeter. 2014 edge for G UVU in the paint as Freyer nails it. Now, Freyer, you know he he sat on that bench a long time. So if there's one guy out here that could be very effective on both ends of the floor. It should have a lot of energy pent up in Oscar Frere. Randolph trying to move over Labor and muscles his way past it. He really did for a smaller player. He took it right to the chest of the big man. Oscar Frere from the arc. Rebound to Randolph. Jake Toulson back to Randolph. Redshirt senior, Flamingo with California. Tolson. His right. Kept back out. Randolph pulls down past Benson. Into the paint. Dishes back out. Connor Tolson for three. Good. Connor Tolson has come to play tonight. That is 12 points for Tolson. Yeah, and that's just good basketball. Again, Randolph into that painted area. Defense does collapse this time, and they find the open man all day to catch and shoot. Two point Wolverines lead. They're going to get Manyang for his third. Got that arm up. Send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, as we have mentioned, March 8th through the 10th is the WAC Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. So let's take a look at how the standings are shaping up for the conference. The Aggies still on top coming into tonight's game with a 10-2 record, but they are up against Kansas City tonight, so we'll see how that one Finishes off because the Roos are hot right now, winning four straight. Utah Valley, the team that the looks are seeing a lot of tonight. Well, they have a conference record of 9-3. They're in that two spot with an overall record of 20-8. and eight. Grand Canyon at 18-10. and 10. So win tonight, you can see how good that would look, especially after beating Seattle University on Thursday. They're in that third spot. And now this is how GCU is looking into that tournament. They get a number two seed. This is what has to happen. They have to win tonight and next Saturday. And Seattle has to lose to Cal State Bakersfield and to beat UVU. I hope you're taking notes at home because if GCU is the number three seed, that also happens with two wins and Utah Valley has to beat Seattle. All right, I'll pause for a moment while you write this last one down. GCU will be a number four seed. Oh no, I lost my notes. Just kidding, guys. They'll be a number four seed by losing to Bakersfield and Seattle, but Bakersfield, Seattle rather, will beat Bakersfield or Utah Valley. Scott Berry, there will uh, be a quiz after no, the end say, of this game. Uh, I didn't bring my number two pencil, so no, I'm not taking that test. But all I know is the Lopes got to put playing well. No matter what seat you are going to the tournament, yes, you'd like to have a higher seat, but more importantly, you have to be playing good basketball. You got to have some momentum, some confidence to your game. All I know is they're in the tournament. It's been a long wait. Utah Valley's playing really well near the end of the season. Now we knew Utah Valley would be there. New Mexico State's going to be there. And the Lopes want to be there too. They want to crash the party. They're they they sitting on the sidelines, waiting the chance to get inside and, and party with the rest of the, the 
rest of the conference, and this is their opportunity. I'm sure they're going to make a big splash. Labor. Benson. Frayer. Bounce pass. Labor. Working down low underneath the Jackson foul is called. How about Coach Marley? His team's down by two. He needs a big bucket coming out of the timeout. He goes to his freshman. That's the new go-to guy is uh, evidenced by that play right there. And out of respect, Utah Valley comes over and double teams. Labor down to that left block, and somehow he's able to shuffle the ball that was made on the right block and gets, gets fouled. Yeah, this is a first attempt. 63%. 10 of 16 coming in was Matt Jackson. 19 of 21, I believe, on Thursday. You're correct, sir. Yeah, there's two, two misses from the free throw line on Thursday night, and they've already got five misses from the free throw line tonight. Jake Gilson. Hogby. Randall. Moving, weaving, trying to find some space. Kicks back out. Ogby's going to throw up a three. That's going to be short. Rebound. Jackson. Good defense and a great job finishing the possession by Matt Jackson. Strong box out on the weak side board. Not always easy to get those, those uh, long three-point shot rebounds when they come off the weak side, but he did a great job boxing out. Out on Ogby. 15 on the shot clock. Now, Braun trying, you know, he couldn't get anything going on the perimeter. They tried to post him down there, but not able to connect on the on the pass down to Braun. He's got to get himself going here. 15 minutes left to go in this game. He's got to find some offense. Benson driving baseline. Put his head down. Foul is called. It's like Randolph. I like it. There it is one more time. Casey Benson, the lefty that loves to drive right. It, it actually turns its uh, Randolph's own guy that ends up pushing him towards the baseline. He, oh, he lost his shoe. Yeah. Well, the officials will give him a timeout or to put his shoe back on, or if he's going to have to come out of the game during the. <laughs> he can't play with one not, shoe. I know that. He's not really in a hurry to get it back. Did he have. They didn't really give him a timeout, but they're giving him enough time at the free throw line to get it laced back, yeah, back up here. The I have the yeah. officials, they used Don't to worry, come out with a towel and act like they're cleaning up some sweat on the lane. And here we go. Maybe he was just trying to freeze Benson out and slow play him no. out there and put him in a smart move. Trying to ice him from the free throw line. A little craftsmanship there. Andre Randolph. Trying to cross over on Benson, the floater, in and out. Oops, lead it by one, six rebounds. Benson. Jackson, rather. Donna Jolson called for the foul. Well, five team fouls to, uh, on the Wolverines and just two on the Lopes. So the Lopes are being the aggressiveness with going to the basket here, trying to get back to that free throw line again. Quick shot by Labor. Big kick out on that front rim and came to Freyer. Ken Oboard. Down low, Jackson underneath. Dishes off to Labor off the glass with the left hand. Well, I guess Labor gave Jackson one. Number five decides he'll give 25 one in return. Randolph bounce pass. Nelson, Jackson got a hand on it. I think that's going to be Lope's ball. Oh, it looked like oh, Labor, excuse see. me, Jackson Let's came, came down and scrummed it and went off the five of the driver. Oh, this was the, the connection here. And that's a nice play by Matt Jackson. How he got that ball over to Labor and how Labor got it is beyond me. That's some uh, good telepathy there, the way those guys are playing well with one another. Oh wow, now another foul. I didn't try to hear. I said it was five to two disadvantage for the Wolverines. And now the official there with a foul with the ball out of bounds. Quick yes. whistle makes it five three. And Yang back in. 
Jackson gets his first personal foul. Martin's in the game, too. Jake Toulson backs up. Here's Cousin Connor. Randolph. He's right. Trying to move. Martin's on him. Got a hand in his face. Right at the end, Manyang battles and puts back the rebound. Oh, they had a great possession there. Played good defense for 29, 30 seconds, and then couldn't corral the defensive board. Brayer. Labor. Looks inside to Jackson. Oh, too heavy. Yeah, a little too quick that time. Yeah, I didn't think he had any kind of a base, any foundation. Had to try to flip that one up quickly before his momentum took him behind the backboard. Wasn't able to get the touch on it that he would have liked. But they're looking high-low. They're looking big to big. Randolph takes it back from Manyang. Ogby moves over to Jake Toulson. Knocks down Martin. Randolph looks for three. Way short. Manyang's there, though. Oh, mercy. Two offensive rebounds by Manyang. Remember, it was when Manyang had to leave the, the game in that first half. The Lopes were able to go on a little run. Labor was able to get seven points. From Manyang back out there, now he's doing what he does best, using his length around the basket. Benson with a floater, not there, but he knocks it back. Martin Freyer, he wants three. Not there. Benson is there. He's called. Uh-oh, Manyang's down. Oh. Manyang, that's going to be one four for him. I don't know if he got his, his arm or his shoulder bent out of socket there, but nobody puts a body on Casey Benson. <laughs> Fifth-year senior goes right down to the basket. And those are tough ones. Sometimes as you're going up for the ball, you got long arms like that. Your arms are and your shoulders aren't really st stable. And Benson gets inside those the, the length of his body there, those arms, and gets to the free throw line. He's not able to connect on that first one though. Manning's gonna have to come out of this game. He's shaking up. Six misses from the free throw line. They were just about money on Thursday night. Be a big difference in this basketball game. Mang Yang out. Yeah, Man Yang's got four personal fouls, and we'll see if Labor can take advantage of that underneath without him that long presence. Totted, knotted back up at 39 again. A couple lead changes, a lot of ties in this one. You're, like, you're right, this could come down to the final minute of the game. DeBerry in the game. Zach Nelson in the game. Oh, Freer. It's three for Freer. Oh, Marley is just irate with these officials. Just irate. Yeah, he's working. He's working the officials hard. Trying to point out calls on one side that maybe he thinks he's not getting on the other side. I mean, he's been calling it pretty fair. I mean, it's a six to four advantage for the Lopes right now. The Berry back out. Guasa. The Berry inside. Zach Nelson back to the basket on labor. Trying to muscle his way in. Turning. Not there. Loose ball. Lopes ball. Time out on the floor. 11.57 to go. We are knotted at 39. Looks like this one's going to go down to the wire now. Mark Pope's not happy with the officials. Nobody is pleased. We'll be back at GCO Arena right after this. Hey, Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. 11.57 to go. Under. There we go. Ah. There's 
love who's blossomed here at GCU Arena. How precious is that? How about Pena? He has been on it. Yeah, he's been beasting them down low and using his length extremely well around the basket. He sent that one back to Cinder. As Labor tried to make a deposit, and I love that one right there because that was a nice little wheel turn using the tired length of the key. I thought that one might have been goaltending, but we're going to give him credit for that second block of the game. He's got himself five boards, two offensive rebounds and putbacks, and four or five for the field, 12 points. And Excuse me, he's got eight points at five boards in just 12 minutes of action, but he's back on that pine because he's also got four personal fouls, and we'll have to see if the Lopes can try to take advantage of this next, you know, five to eight minutes that he sits on that bench. Well, Labor did a pretty good job when he wasn't on the court. Now with some toe injury. Throughout the course of the season, did Mang Yang. Mark, way over to Freyer. Freyer pulls down, speed on the baseline. Oh, yeah! That was a thing of beauty as he knifed to the left of the defender that wanted to come over and takes the charge. That ball hit the rim below the rim, and somehow it crawled up over the top. Freyer has to have got a hand on it. One out of bounds with Oscar Freyer. Look at this one one more time here. Cross-court pass, and just no hesitation. Takes it right to the right. Look at that knife, hang time. My goodness, <laughs> that was the way the guys do it at the next level. Jack Nelson called. We're going to screen on Benson. Yeah, they were a little pistol action up out of the corner. The big's got to get there early and get his feet set to set that pick. And Ogby's so fast, he and little thing Nelson can figure out where he wants, he needs to be before Ogby's coming up out of that corner. He's just like shot out of the can. Look at that. Labor down the side. Down low. Oh, he got to strip away. Nelson got a hand on it. Right back into Benson. Freya. Popping Oscar Freya. Oh boy, Oscar Freya is waking up. Once he gets a little bit of a taste of that offense, watch him being really active, maybe even trying to get in the passing lane, trying to get a steal here on this defensive possession. Oops. Showing a little bit of, of momentum here, but Zach Nelson's underneath. Draws the foul as he pulls it back down. He got Labor to leave his feet. I'm not sure if that's who the foul is on, but he did a nice job there finding the big fella up under the basket on the left side of the rim. He does a little show, uh, show, and, show and go here. Just a little up fake there. He gets Labor to lose his, lose his balance and his, his footing and gets to the other side of the rim, but he's not able to connect. A lot of his free throws here this half. That's an actually call. Milstead in the game for Benson. Yeah, this is about the time Milstead came in on Thursday night and was a difference maker in the second half. Did a great job running the show. Even got a couple buckets. Nelson missed for both. Milstead in the game. Right his baseline, back out. Jackson quickly, Milstead for three. Good! He's almost money from the arc. Yeah, he really does. He doesn't shoot a lot of them. He's not a volume shooter, but he's very accurate when he does take them. He makes it. Biggest lead of the night for GCU, DeBerry. Hands it off to Jake Toulson. Eight all, Lopes run. DeBerry for three, short. Jordan Martin with the rebound. Oh, I really would have wanted to see Milstead push it there on that possession, but they're going to walk it up and make sure they get it into their set. Milstead 10 of 16. How about Oscar Freyer? Moreau Catholic. Here it from tonight. You can hear him from the Bay Area. Yeah, largest lead for the Lopes tonight. Back to back three point buckets for the Oakland Connections. 11 0 run for GCU. Wolverines haven't scored in three minutes, eight seconds. How about this young freshman off the plane here? He gets a little swing pass from Matt Jackson and knocks down the left wing, and I love this one here. Just a skip pass across the top. Remember, Freer got that pass last time and drove it. This time, he just looks a pop from beyond the arc. Ten-point Lopes lead. 
trying to secure the 100th victory at GCU for that man in the middle, Dan Martley. Well, fans, be sure to participate and attend the 8th Annual Run to Fight Children's Cancer here at GCU on March 10th. Coming up, starting at 7 a.m., all proceeds, that's right, all proceeds, donated directly to the Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Children's Cancer Network. There'll be a 10K, a 5K, and a Cancer Survivor's Run Walk. For more information, just log on to runtofightcancer.com. Great day, the run to fight cancer. Come on out, bring the whole family. Come out to the uh, run to fight cancer and then check out the Lopes in action at the WAC tournament. Yeah, hopefully that would be the uh, day of the WAC championship final game, right? So try to bring that energy. Bring that put energy. a banner in, in here in the uh, GCU arena. Get ahead of us. <laughs> we can dream, can't we? Not a dream. Lopes in the second half, well, they started two of nine, but since they're four of four. That's it for the bench getting up, rallying the team. They want it. Tolson trying to move on Jackson. Jake Tolson. The Berry drives off the glass and in. Oh my goodness. The Berry with a hard fought basket underneath. That, that's all Pope right there. He's enough of these outside shots. Shooting 35% here in the second half. I need somebody that's going to be man enough to drive it to the bucket. Berry to the fall. Trying to guard Freyer. Freyer. Ooh, short. Loose ball. Jackson is after it. Fresh 30. Oh, Labor loses it. Nielsen picks it off. Oh, the foul call just to, off of that loose ball. Oh, Miss Q. Milstead's going to be called. Harley trying to calm Freyer down. Just a little bit revved up. Obviously, tons of energy. <laughs> yeah, he had a couple outside shots from the uh, prior to that timeout. And he got that ball about the same spot where he'd hit in a couple be previously. And I think he was a little too quick to get into his shot. He had more time to measure the distance. First turnover of the second half for the Lopes. Labor. Jake Toulson pulls it down. Back out. Randolph driving. Amari Milstead tried to get a hand on it. That's short. Randolph gets a rebound. Put back. Ooh, the hoop and the harm. And the Wolverines. Ryan amount of comeback. Again, inside, a lot of dribble handoffs, action coming out of the wings, out of the corners, and this one right there, that's tough for anybody to stay with. He was doing about 190, coming around that corner there, he stops on a dime and goes back into a reverse pivot, and nobody puts a body on the shooter in situations like that. How often do you see the ball come right back to the guy who let it go, and he gets a chance to go back up and get the offensive rebound, get the three-point play the old-fashioned way, so a quick 5-0 run, Cuts this thing back down to five points. Drawn over the scorer's table. Has to play 25 minutes, and Josh still without a point. Milstead with a big bucket. Uh, the confidence on this kid right now is off the charts for a freshman. Big game like that, pull up, mid-range jump. Eight points for Milstead. Prayer on the floor with four personal fouls. Randolph. Terrible call. I don't like that because the big is down there in position. That play is initiated below the lower block. You got your hands straight up in the air. What, what else are you supposed to do? I mean, this is a play that gets initiated down here below the lower block. He's got his hands up in the air. The guy jumps into him and gets a foul call. That's little man basketball. I don't like that at all. That's the way the game has changed over the last 25 years. It just makes me so upset. Braun in for Freyer. Freyer's going to sit with four. You see guys at the next level do that all the time. Westbrook and um, Harden. <laughs> he said Harden's really good at that. A lot of guys like Kyrie Irving, they get into that painted area, just throw their body into anybody that's down there and get whistled for the foul, uh, for the foul and go to the free throw line. This drives me batty. Taken by a former NBA big man. <laughs> 
little, still a little salty over that. I think I could still be playing if they hadn't changed the rules on me. Jackson. Good, Matt Jackson. I get a nice bump off the bench between Milstead and Jackson. We saw this on Thursday night. And uh, the other Aussie out there on the floor, Martin, he's doing a good job defensively trying to shut down Randolph and Ogby and Toulson, whoever he might switch out on to. Five points for Jackson, seven rebounds, also has four assists. Now that's better. Because uh, again, once again, that big is down there, good position, hands in the air, guy launches himself into him, and then this time they don't they don't bite on the call. Look at this one more time. Labor's down here, hands in the air. It's actually Milstead that ties him up. Milstead, eight points, two of three from the arc. Not bad once again. He's so poised as a uh, freshman coming in. Just a cool he really is. He's got an extreme amount of confidence right now. Coach Marley has really done a nice thing with him. He didn't throw him right out in the fire early on. He let this kid learn and develop and practice, get a sense of confidence about his game, and get him a little hungry for him to come out and step on the court, get him playing his whole, whole life, probably start all the teams he's played for. Now all of a sudden he's got a thirst and a hunger and confidence when he steps on the court. Penetrate condition, knocking down the outside shots, going down there, scrapping on defense, and tying guys up. I love that one right there. That is a big time move for a young player. You have the confidence in a tight game. One dribble pull up from the baseline. Well said, eight points in 11 minutes. Josh Braun had mentioned. Unfortunately, he hasn't come over the any points here tonight, but look at that all time against the Utah Mountain in seven games, 19.6 per game average. Yeah, he has feasted on this team in the past, and he hasn't been able to get anything going uh, tonight against them, but he has been doing a good job deep, uh, on that defensive deep glass. He's got five boards at, uh, in this basketball game. He was the leader uh, in, at, at halftime, so one thing you know about Josh is as long as he's out on the floor and having a chance to contribute, whether it's uh, on the defensive end or on the glass, he's happy with his team has got the lead. And he, he's very unselfish, just wants the best for the Lopes and not worried so much about his own personal number. So Freire was red hot, had to take a seat. He's got 14 points in the game in 20 minutes on the court. He's got four personal fouls. Keontae Vernon also with four personal fouls. And once again, Martin and Jackson seeing a lot of minutes here coming off of the bench. Milstead stepping up big time. Laver has 14, but it, it's been a hard fought 14. Started 0 for 7 from the field. The Lopes haven't been as precise from the free throw line, albeit they have, they have visited the free throw line here in the second half. Inside, Jackson. Oh, he wanted it badly. He really jumped up to elevate, to throw that one down thunderous. I think if he just would have just went in there, he just quick dunked it. Just get in there and just slam it real hard, he would have got there before uh, the defender would have a chance to challenge. Wolf's hit 33% in the opening half, 50% here in the second. Ogby driving, has a little bit of room, left hand easy off the glass. Yeah, that's a bad matchup for Matt Jackson, 20 feet away from the basket with Ogby, as crafty as he is and as fast as he is with the basketball, Jackson's at a real disadvantage. You gotta make Ogby play in a crowd. Six point Lopes lead, oh, Laver, nonchalant. Connor Toulson knocked it away. Up for DeBerry, that's two turnovers this second half for Alessandro Labor. Yeah, and, and the Lopes have been a good job taking care of the basketball. They only have a two or three turnovers here in the entire second half, but that was the one where the defender came off his man on the baseline side, out of the vision of Labor, knocked it away. Labor leaves for Braun, Braun, oh, just off the mark. And he cannot buy a bucket. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> Coach Marley talking about players not hanging his head. He was kind of hanging his head on that one, throwing, I can't get you a better shot than that. You just got to find a way to fight it into the basket. Milstead gets called. That's his third personal foul. Just when you think the Lopes get a 10-point lead and they might be able to pull away, here come the Wolverines right back. He gets the middle spur to their own, and they're in the midst of a little... 9-2 to two spur to try to cut this thing back down to a two-point game. Coach Polk must get a sense that his team's swaying back here momentum-wise. 
Manyang, with four personal fouls, comes back onto the court. Yeah, yeah, Lopes took advantage while he was off the floor. They went on a little mini spurt, but just couldn't hold it. Now Manyang comes back in this basketball game. He's, Utah Valley's right where they were when he left. And the starters back out there. 6-0 run for Utah Valley. Mark, he looks for three. Oh, not there. It was money on Thursday. Out on Jackson. Lopes cooling off. They had a couple threes and by uh, Frere and Milstead. Mark Pope gets a good timeout as that balloon, that lead ballooned to uh, double figures. And, and it really settled his team down because the lid was about to come off this place. Now this crowd, you can hear a pin drop in here as this is a two-point game. They're, they're getting nervous. Freyer in for Braun. He has four. Manyang also with four. And that he's looks gone. like he's gone. Moving screen. Mark Pope can't believe it. No one of the system coaches up in his eye rate, but that was that was the correct call. He, he just hip checked. I think it was Martin comes around this screen. Right. Oh, here is Milstead. Milstead fights over the top, and Manyang clearly does not have his feet set. Both head coaches have uh, just about lost it with these officials. And he, Mark, Mark Pope is, is trying to get the attention of the official on the far side of the floor across from the GCU bench to give him another piece of his mind. And he does not like it all. He's storming down there and he says, wait, I'm going the wrong way. I need to talk to that guy over there. <laughs> You'd be lucky if he doesn't get rung up for a technical foul here. You don't want to get a tech. Two-point game, 5.33 to go. Jack Nelson comes in, and Pope is still irate at one official across the court. Milstead, Jackson. Pope's could add to this momentum here as he tries to drive in on Ogby. Freyer loses it. Martin is all alone. Good! Well, my favorite Martin is... Not really known for his offense. He's a straight, hard-nosed defender, but when you give him an open look and a chance to get his feet set, he can knock him down. Randolph driving to his lap, pulls back out. Now into the paint, back out. Tolson, Randolph, hide by Milstead. Nelson comes out for some support. Randolph waits patiently, underhanded in. Under five to go. That was a hard-fought basket. Crowd got back into it. Lopes defense from Swarman and Randolph somehow again and again gets into that painted area. And as you said, took his time. He's got his bucket. Labor help over Zach Nelson. I like that one right there. He got a good entry pass off a bounce pass. Easy for Biggs to pick those up. They know exactly what they're going to do with it when they catch the ball. And he goes right into that little drop step to the baseline, puts it down. Back out, Freyer picks it off, cuts it back in, or else he would have been out. I totally could have had that ball if Freyer hadn't have grabbed it. Coming right to me. I could have got it, and gave it back to him. We could have got, I could have got an assist for a slam dunk oh, right there. Oh yeah, it was it was wheels up time right there. Like, Picture Coach Marley, ties getting tighter there. Well, I don't think either one of these coaches has sat down this oh. entire second half. They are wearing a paint off that sideline. Love it. Both coaches fired up. Great emotion here in the Western Athletic Conference. Two of the top teams in the conference. Ogby. Don't leave Ogby. Don't leave him baseline drive in. Pulled down by Labor. Good work by Matt Jackson. That was a stop they needed right there. Ogby was looking to attack. He just wasn't able to get that ball up off glass. He's a nice player. Milstead. Cross the mark. Oh, Matt Jackson. Now, Matt Jackson was in a wrestling contest. Somebody down there on that right block. I, I didn't get a good look at it, but both players kind of got bent over at one point, and the officials are going to say it's an offensive foul. And, we're going the other way. Time out on the floor, 3.29 to go. This battle goes toe to toe. The Wolverines and the Lopes TCU holding on to a five point lead. Our 
armed forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. I'm Christian Talon and I'm earning my bachelor's in information technology at GCU. Cyber threats are a growing problem for companies and individuals alike. A lot of resources are under scrutiny of attack. I found it my purpose to try and help businesses and defend themselves against those attacks. One of the great benefits to going to GCU is that we as students get access to the state-of-the-art IT labs where we can put to practice the information that we're learning in our classrooms. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Just five points separate the Lopes from the Wolverines with under with just over three minutes to go. Meanwhile, other games in the WAG tonight. The women taking a hard loss at Utah Valley, falling 84 to 64 despite great effort by Jessica Drewski. She had 27 points, 10 for 13 from three-point range, or seven from nine for three-point range and seven assists. Meanwhile, the Aggies right now trying to hand Kansas City their first loss in five games. 72-49, the score there with about as much time as we have in this game to go. Chicago State, they put up a fight looking for that first win in conference action, but in the end, they fell at UTRGV. And remember, guys, Seattle University right now losing at Baker, or Bakersfield. It's just a one-point game, two minutes to go. That is what the Lopes want. They want to see Seattle fall to Bakersfield and then bounce back next week with a win over Utah Valley. And that would help GCU finish with a number two seed heading into the WAC. That is, of course, if they take care of business tonight and against Bakersfield. So I think what we're learning, the theme is the Lopes need to win. Their opponents need to lose off. Easy set. Sounds easy enough. Another great crowd here. DC Arena, they'll be back a week from tonight, closing out the conference schedule in the regular season. For many of them, make their way to Las Vegas for the first time. Tournament eligibility for GCU. At the Orleans Arena, we hope we'll see you there. GCU's bench has 11 points in the second half. They had six in the first. They've been really relied upon here with foul trouble to Vernon, Oscar Freyer. Keontae Burns and Oscar Ferrer, you're right about those two guys. Bill said he's got three personal fouls. And, you know, one, one thing that's kept these Lopes with the five-point advantage is they got 13 offensive rebounds. It's led to 11 second-chance points. They, they started out this half two of nine from the field. They are eight of 13 since. Jake Tolson, backdoor on B. Foul. Jackson. So all game long, Abdi's down in this left block, and he keeps shooting up out of that corner, coming up across the top. This time he goes backdoor, because they think that Flair uh, thinks he's coming back up out of that corner like he's been doing for the last 37 minutes, and he goes backdoor so crafty and catches that pass, and too quick, attacks the big, earns a trip to the foul line. That would be perfect, three for three from the free throw line. 32 minutes, 10 points. Three fifteen and counting, four point Lopes lead. That's a big miss. I mean, I know there's still three over three minutes to go, but it just kept, keeps it a two-possession game, which Lopes got to feel good about. You had a 10-point lead. You'd hate to see it all of a sudden evaporate down to a one-possession game with three minutes to go. Down on the shot clock. No step. Puts it up. Ooh, too heavy. Pulled down by Randolph. Randolph to his right. Leaves it for Connor Toulson. Jake Toulson pulls down to three. Leaves it there, Ogby, oh, almost lost it. Coulson, Randolph. 
Back behind him, Connor Toulson driving into the paint. Underneath, floater up top and in. Two point lead. Has that 10 point lead evaporated? Yeah, it, 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 the paint's in, uh, the points in the paint now really starting to hold hurt the low. They are at 38 of their 56 points that come in that painted area. Trayer has a little bit of room underneath and off the glass with the left hand. Put a stop to a drop that it was over two minutes. It's almost like the Lopes heard me say that they were at a plus minus eight disadvantage and decided to go inside themselves. Back to four. Connor Tolson, under two to go. Crowd on their feet. Randolph, Freyer trying to get a hand on it. Be careful, he's got four. Randolph driving, working on Martin. No bucket. Yeah, they're going to be two free throws as the Lopes are in the a double penalty, but nice job by Martin really moving his feet. I, I, it, it, now, granted, this is Randolph. He's coming out of that corner really quick, and that's a pretty good job of moving your feet, and the officials called the foul long before the shot. It wasn't a shooting foul that earned Randolph a trip to the floor. They said that foul actually occurred on the drive, but because of the fact they had 10 fouls already, more than 10 fouls, he gets some two, two free throws and cut into that deficit. First on Jared Martin. Casey Benson checks in for Damari Milstead. Misses on the back end. Lead is three. Well, we said this thing was going to come down to the final minute. We had a one possession game with a minute 40 on the clock. Jackson. Leads for Benson. Connor Toulson all over him. Jake Toulson comes out. Ten on the shot clock. Casey dishes back out. Martin pulled down the look for three. Labor's got a look for three. Short. Jackson pulled down the rebound. Fresh 30. Calming it down. Yeah, Marley, time out. Good oh. time out there by Coach Marley. Team wasn't looking very sharp offensively. The possession before. Big offensive rebound by Matt Jackson. Get the timeout. Set something up. Great Jackson's rebounds. got eight points. Yeah. And Pearson's GCU softball team is ready to roll this week in the GCU Purple Classic. Come out to the brand new GCU softball stadium. Support the Lopes tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. And they square off against the Purple Eagles of Niagara. Followed at 11.30, the Huskies of Houston Baptist. GCU softball is on the rise. They're looking for the sweep. They beat Niagara 10-2, Houston Baptist 10-3. A couple more wins today. Pearson and the GCU softball team on a bit of a roll. The brand new softball stadium, chair back seats. Come on out. They use metal bats in softball? Huh? No. They use wooden bats? Oh, no, no, they got metal. I'm sorry. I, I thought we were talking about the uh, chair back seats, which are a nice, oh, nice oh. feature at the new stadium. Oh, yeah. Who was I talking to about the new? They got a new baseball stadium, new too, right? New baseball, yeah. Part of 10 new facilities in two years. Baseball uh, got opened up against the seventh rate torn frogs. Oh, uh, Lopes had them on the ropes there, 2 0 in game one. But the uh, Horned Frogs, you know, a good baseball team, they came back, scored three in the ninth to win it. Who Wolves did take the. Uh, who won the series? The uh, TCU That's all I did. Care about. Two out of three. Oh. Wolves came back and won on Sunday. Okay, all right. So who they got next? They're, on the, they're uh, at the Tony Gwynn Classic in San Diego. Well, they're on the road for a while. Yeah. I want to get out Big to win today. You gonna get me some tickets for those? Come on, no, oh, come on out. Okay. okay. Free. Oh, free seats? Yeah. All right, save me a couple right behind home plate. I'll, I'll see what I can do. I shouldn't have probably said that. Yeah, I can get you a couple. <laughs> I know some people. I like to sit right behind the plate so I call balls and strikes. Uh, yeah, you get loud down there. Labor! Oh, it's not there! Uh, he took his, I mean, he did. He needed to take his time, gather himself to go up strong. They got the look they wanted. They got to get a stop right here. Under a minute to go, the lead is three for GCU. Jake Tolson swarm, loose ball. Diving after it. Looks bold. Coach Pope is irate. And just some bad luck that time. I think the ball squirted off of one of the Utah Valley players. and out of bounds because it looked like Martin was trying to grab the ball and one of those local players was trying to grab the ball on the baseline, didn't corral it and it went out of bounds. Let's see if this ball goes out of bounds off of one of the, let's see who, who hits it here. I'm so sure. I, I, uh, I think maybe, maybe Pope has got a case. 
Oh, no. Oh, no, he threw it away. He stopped going to the corner, and, th and Mart just threw that ball to the corner. He threw it away. Well, maybe it worked out the way it was probably supposed to happen. Inbound, Jake Tolson. 45 seconds. Randolph. Don't want to give up a three here. Well, got to stay tight. Randolph drives. Labor underneath. Tied up. No, excuse me. One point game. They they do have to shoot this ball. There's about a six and a half second differential between game clock and shot clock. Timeout, Marley. Wow. Have you got your tickets to the WAC tournament? If it's, yeah. This is going to be a battle. How good has Randolph been at getting to that bucket? 15 points now in this basketball game, and both of them have come by fighting his way to the basket. Matt Jackson getting 27 minutes on the floor. He's got a career-high rebound with eight. Speaking of that WAC tournament, you better get your tickets. All session tickets can be purchased through the GCU ticket office and the Orleans Arena box office. The GCU ticket office, that number is 602-639-8979. Single session tickets available to purchase on March 7th at the Orleans box office. The women's quarterfinals tip off Wednesday, March 7th. Men's quarterfinals a day later, Thursday, March 8th. Oh, big possession right here. Let's see what Coach Marley drew up. Will they go back inside to the freshman or try to get a high pick and roll for Benson, moving from his left to his right? 12 on the shot clock. Connor Toulson on Benson. Bounce pass, Freyer. Freyer pulls back, ooh, careful. Six on the shot clock, five. They've got to make something happen. Benson is swarmed underneath the shot. Oh, it's off the mark. Loose ball picked up by Nelson. Three, two. Runs into Jackson at the buzzer that was way past it. This game is over. It's over. The left win it. 60 to 59. Had just enough to hang on. Horrible offensive possession coming out of that timeout, but they survived the race up the floor. It just kind of held their skeleton. Matt Jackson just gets to a spot, just stops and through. Randolph off his game, and he just didn't even get that shot out of his hand before the clock expired. Pumps win it 60 to 59. A nail biter down to the final moments before Randolph took it up, ran into Jackson, and his shot attempt was after the clock had expired. So that is 100 career victories for head coach Dan Marley. We'll be back to hear the post-game press conference from Dan Marley after he has secured his 100th victory. Wolves win it and improved to 19 and 10 overall, eight and five in the conference. We'll be back with more here from GCU Arena after we take this timeout. In addition to watching WAC basketball on your mobile device, you can now watch selected games on your TV through Apple TV, Droid TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Brought to you by the Western Athletic Conference and Blue Frame Technology. Get ready for the WAC Indoor Track and Field Championships, February 22nd through the 24th in Napa, Idaho. Who will be the next WAC champion? Grand Canyon University, Arizona's private Christian university, is a top tourism market bustling right in the heart of Phoenix. Join the student team at the GCU Hotel, Canyon 49 Grill, and Coffee Shop GCBC for real-world learning opportunities. Hospitality students can gain workplace skills and leadership training on the GCU Championship Golf Course featuring brand new amenities. Across every enterprise, you have the chance to network, learn, and grow. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. It's the most wonderful time of the year, the 2018 WAC Basketball Tournament at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. March 7th through 10th, 14 games, four days of WAC Madness. 
be there for the triumph. Get your tickets now at orleansarena.com. See you in WAC Vegas. Oh, got a little scary there at the end. 60 to 59, the Lopes over Utah Valley. As the Lopes win their 19th game of the season, improve to eight and five and stay in the hunt for seeding anywhere from two through four in the Western Athletic Conference. As you look at the final stats, six to 24 from the arc. Three throws, 10 of 16, a rebounding margin in favor of GCU. Points in the paint though, boy, Utah Valley owned it 40 to 22. <laughs> Smashed them inside. Yep. And, and that was what kept them along. I mean, 40 of their 59 points coming in that paint. And they, they, you know, the Lopes did what they normally do. They choke off the three-point line. They did that for the most part. But they don't normally get beat that badly inside. It was the speed at which this Valley, uh, Utah Valley team played with. It had them just discombobulated on the defensive end. Yeah, Connor Toulson definitely had that speed working down the baseline. This was the second lowest scoring game of the season for Utah Valley. The Wolverines are the highest scoring team in conference scoring. Uh, so the Lopes, again, defense has been kind of their, their MO this season. And we'll see how far it carries them. Not a very clean coming out of that timeout near the end of the game there. No, it wasn't. It was poor execution. I mean, let's just call it what it was. I mean, they, they're generally so good after uh, timeout situations or on their, on their baseline out of bounds play sets when they've had an opportunity to collect and gather themselves and get all the pieces in the right place. But that was uh, really bad. I think Oscar Frere was in Martin passed up a shot. It was interesting that Josh Braun was not on the play or on the court for that final play. Maybe they threw some guys off and want, not wanting to take that, that big you know, hero shot, so to speak. But Casey Benson fought something off a of glass that they weren't able to secure. And they let Randolph get inside the three-point line with about four seconds. He dribbled the length of the floor, and uh, he just barely missed getting out that shot before the clock expired. Well, it's time for our player of the game, and we'll send it in to our player of the game, Dan Marley, at the post-game press conference. Ah, uh, just gut, yeah, gutty. That's a, that's a tough one. Utah Valley is really good, and uh, you know we had a hard time scoring, obviously, but we just fought through it. Um, Oscar came through a big time. You know, Ali had a really off game, but he kept on fighting, um, and his just just presence in there, uh, you know, guys through. I thought Matt was really good. Uh, Damari came in again at the end and made some big shots. So. Uh, just a gunny performance and a really good win. Very proud of our guys. I know you make it about the team and the guys, but for you, it was your 100th career win. Yeah. Um, it's just this university, man. It's not me. It's uh, the support and everything that we have here, my coaching staff, the team. Um, I'm the last guy. It's, it's about all these other guys that, that help. I'm just uh, the lucky guy who gets to run the show. So it's, uh, it's, it's just the great people around me. That's what it is. Well, I had to get into them because, you know, this, this game is, is funny. When people start thinking they're good, it will slap you quick. And I just his body language was terrible to begin the game. He missed a shot, and he was looking down and looking at the ref. And I'm like, you're not going to make every shot. You're not going to have a great game. You just got to fight through it and knock it off with the body language and just play. And once he started doing that, it was better. Uh, so that's the lesson learned for him. But uh, he's a competitive kid. And, um, you know, Jared and Matt and all those guys. That's why I've kind of shortened the rotation. Nothing against. You know, I thought Fifi played well. Uh, Rob's going to be a good player. But uh, those two guys especially have been through the wars with me. Can you take us through those final plays after that timeout? And yeah, it was tough. You know, I wanted to try to get it to, to Ollie. Um, and they obviously knew that. Uh, we were having a hard time scoring. Um, so that last play, I was going to have a pick across for Ollie. If they took that away, then get it to Oscar, who the other guy was pretty hot. And then uh, Casey did a, a great job of uh, getting the ball on the rim, which allowed it to clock to keep running. And uh, so it wasn't pretty, but uh, we buckled down and got some stops. With Keontae's foul trouble, how big was how Matt played tonight? Uh, Matt's going to be big for the rest of the year and next year. Um, you know, like I said, he's he just looks better. He's lively. Um, you know, we, that dunk attempt was, was great. That's the old Matt. So uh, he's, you know, where he shoots the ball and how smart he is. Um, you know, that, that gives us another dimension out there, a guy who can spread the floor and shoot it. Casey was really, really assertive there in that first half after that little mix-up. Well, I, that's what I said to our guys. Our body language is terrible, Richard. It was just like they were hanging their heads and upset they scored and everything. And it's just, you know, sometimes I can't be the guys fighting all the time and yelling all the time and showing emotion. And, you know, sometimes it's got to be other guys. And it has to be, definitely got to be our seniors. And I know that's not Casey's, you know, personality. But damn, it comes the time where you got to get fired up, and enough's enough. 
And so our guys got to do that. It's got to mean something to them, and sometimes they got to show it. Yeah, and it was a cheap one. They said I got a technical for leaving the bench. I was told that I'm supposed to leave the bench, especially when I look down there, and there's five guys. Their coaching staff is on the floor, hands on my guys, right in front of their bench, and I'm just going to sit back and watch my guys? No, no. So I went down there, and I was supposed to do that. And they tell me I get a technical for leaving the bench. That is, that is not right. That's not, that's not the rule. That's not what I was told. The head coaches are, are allowed to leave, and they are supposed to separate the guys, and that's exactly what I did. And then Martin, the ref, put his hands on me and pushed me, which is not a good thing to do. Um, so I don't know why I got a technical on that. I was trying to keep control and get my guys away from their guys. Did that, that whole thing do some good for your team, though? It seemed like everybody had a higher level. I hope so. I hope so. But I, it, our guys can't wait for that. You know, it's the time of the year where they got to, they got like I, I was telling them, we can't always be me, man. I, I can't be the fiery one, spitting and throwing and cursing and veins popping everywhere in the huddle. Somebody's got to show some emotion. And, you know, we finally did and we won. The way you went in since the landmark, do you like the, the way you got it? Because it was gutty and gritty and... I'll, get, I'll take it any way I can take it. I mean, you know, we've been struggling, so um, this is a great win. Utah Valley's played well all year long. They're right there at the top of the whack. You, you knew they wanted this game. Uh, there's a sniffing distance of, of being first place still, so they're going to come here and play hard. So, yeah, I'll take that every day of the week. Getting Manny Yang fouled out, was that a, a key turning point too down the stretch? So. Get him out of the I don't game. know. I mean, yeah, he's a good player, but you know, Ali was going at him pretty good. I mean, yeah, he's a good player, but shit, who cares? Oscar's good. You know, it, you know, he's good. He's, you know, when he shoots a ball like that, uh, you know, especially when other guys are struggling, it, it helps. So uh, he's just got to keep working at it. He's got to keep working at it. I really liked when he attacked the closeout and finished at the rim. That's something he hasn't been able to do in traffic. He usually loses that. So I was very happy that he attacked and finished. So uh, he's got to continue to get better, but he's doing a good job. Well, we got one more. And like I said, we wanted to be uh, three wins in a row, especially here at home, get to 20 wins, uh, and then hopefully feel good about ourselves. And then when the tournament starts, uh, start playing. But uh, you know, I can't say enough, like I said, about Damari, too. And the kid sits over there, and he comes in. And like I said, he has no fear, man. I love that kid. So uh, good for him. Good for everybody. I mean, it's a team win. Everybody loved it. Perimeter shooting from Damari and Oscar. Would you have expected that earlier? Yeah, that? you know, well, Damari's really worked on a shot, and Oscar has showed glimpses even when he's a freshman of getting hot. So, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad they did because you know Ali was five for seventeen, and you know nobody else really shot the ball well. Jared made a big three, which was huge. Ali had a lot of misses in both games, but just the fact that he can draw fouls in there. Well, just his presence in there, drawing fouls, people double team. That's why Oscar got a good look. Uh, you know, they're, they're so worried about him, they got to find a way to stop him that other guys get looks. So even if he's not scoring, he's a big presence in there. Co, thank you. Congratulations. Post game press conference from head coach Dan Marley after the Lopes win at 60 to 59, 100 career <laughs> victories, our player of the game. Yeah. That's the, best, that's the best stat we've put up all night. I mean, congratulations to Coach Marlow. I mean, we, we knew he was going to be a fiery coach and probably, you know, motivate these guys, but he's a true coach. I mean, you get 100 wins, that, that you know, is that uh, pin that you can put on your lapel. He's a true coach, works hard at his craft. I'm very happy for uh, Coach Marley. He put it on every ounce of energy as he does each and every game, but uh, he, he he kind of called out the team a little bit. These guys need to, maybe the seniors need to step it up and show a little bit of emotion and, and get this team going. He wants those guys uh, on on tilt. He, he wants them right on that edge of being able to you know lose lose their head and playing with that type of intensity by the evidence that he doesn't want to be the most vocal, active, aggressive, fighting, nastiest player <laughs> our, like he was our person he in the huddle. That's how he was when he played, and he wants to get that from not just his senior. He wants it from everybody, and he's going to demand that you know down the stretch here going into that WAC tournament. Yeah, they got one it. game left, and uh, he wants to see that same fight that they, they had in that second half. Well, the things are happening here with just one game now remaining in the Western Athletic Conference uh, as uh, looks like Bakersfield knocked off Seattle here tonight. So mm. that means tied for third now are the Lopes and some deciding factors whether Seattle wins or loses for that final. We could The uh, Lopes could move all the way up to second. It, it'd be fantastic because they were scuffling along coming off of that 
three-game losing streak, and they played well these last two games. This is a tough team. Even though they had them down 10 in the second half, they came back, and somehow they were able to hang on, and that was wonderful. Take a look at the standings uh, as, they, as we sit tonight. There you see it. Eight and five, Seattle U and GCU, and of course, GCU swept Seattle U during the conference schedule. Utah Valley in second right now. Seattle knock off Utah Valley. Uh, we shall see what happens. Bakersfield, though, takes on uh, on Seattle, so we'll see if Bakersfield knocks off Seattle, then the Lopes can move on up in the conference as uh, Bakersfield beats Seattle tonight. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all over the place as uh, Seattle and Utah go toe-to-toe -to -toe next week. Here are your three keys. I'll stop talking. <laughs> yeah, well, they had, you know, they had to have that swarming state of mind. I think they did that for uh, a, a time and stretch in that second half. Really had them do a... a, a you know, four field goal percentage. They got loose a couple times later on, got that number back up to 42%. But uh, I like the way they, they attacked the ball on the perimeter, ran guys off of shots. They just couldn't stay with them once they got to the painted area. And I love, you know, they weren't shy to shoot that three-point shot. They didn't get as many of them they go in as they would have liked, but they had some timely three-point shots when they were able to put that up to a 10-point lead. And then mentally tough. Coach Marley talked about that. There was times when Laver, he said, was hanging hanging his head in that first half when they weren't making shots. And he started 0 for 7. I think Braun kind of hung his head, and he didn't get back into this game uh, after a poor, slow start. So they can't have that against the good teams that they're going to see. I mean, you got a tough one against Bakerfield, who, who's a you know, hot team right now coming in here next Saturday. they got to be ready to get back in the lab on Monday, take tomorrow off, get back in the lab on Monday, and start looking at game field and getting ready to finish this thing out with a winning note, take that momentum into that WAC tournament. Well, it's homecoming next weekend on the GCU campus. Join the Lopes Saturday night as they welcome back the alumni and host the Roadrunners of CSU Bakersfield. GCU will look for revenge against the runners for the loss last week in California. If you can't make it to the House of Havoc, be sure to tune into the year view, starting with the pregame show with Kate at 6.30 or join us online at gcu.tv. If you are out and about, Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper are on the Fanatic 1580 AM. 99.3 FM and 95.9 FM. But that'll do it from here at GCO Arena where tonight the Lopes beat the Utah Valley Wolverines 60 to 59. Please join us again a week from tonight. GCU closes out the regular season by hosting Bakersfield. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel. Wishing you a wonderful Saturday night. <laughs>